Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Martine Wishmare from General Bytes. Good morning, Bitcoin. Dan Eve, the Crypto Raptor. All right, all right, all right. Give it up for candy. Josh Shigala from the standard.io. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Ben Ark from LN Bits. Nostasha Mike. Good, good evening, everybody. Gabriel D. Vine from the World Crypto Network. Guten Tag und willkommen. And I'm Thomas Hunt, also from the World Crypto Network. Moving on to issue one. Issue one, Bitcoin could hit 30K or 100K this year. What a range. As analysts warns, the next months could be key. Plan B, the legendary analyst with the stock to flow. That's right, there's less Bitcoin all the time, so they're going up in value. Chart says that it could go to 100K or 30k dan eve 100k or 30k which way will it go that's quite a lovely range isn't it um i like it when uh, when when like analysts kind of do the do the well it, it could go up or it could go down and everyone's like whoa, whoa very good very good uh, very good theories yes 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 um but i suppose it leaves your options open right because that way if it if it pumps the, then uh, you're right and if it dumps you then you're right so you've got the angles covered and people like people only remember the uh, the hits right it's like with psychics uh, they do the, the kind of the, the cold stuff and uh, and people remember they're like oh yes sandra yeah 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 oh yeah i remember that yeah yeah it's definitely sandra um, but at the, at the end of the day, it does seem to be flowing uh, in the same way as the, you know, the stock to flow. It kind of kept in the in the blue lines, you know, in the blue in the blue area, and um, uh, and it does. It just seems like we, you know, we we're not double topping, or at least I hope not. Um, and if anything, I think it's going to be a really scary point when we when we start to reach the the previous all time high. You know, if it gets, it, it, that's going to be like a real nail biter because if it pops over the top, then you know we're we're mooning, and if not, then you know that's going to be shut up shop for the next three years, and everyone on a downer, uh, whilst we slowly, uh, you know, lose lose a bit of the Bitcoin height and then uh, gain traction again once the <laughs> once the next um, the next halvening happens. So I'm uh, I'm on the side of hundred hundred k, yeah, and I think actually we're pretty much. The, this time last week, it was exactly, almost exactly the same price, I think. So, uh, or maybe just a slightly fraction higher. So hopefully by the end of the show, if everyone buys a bit of Bitcoin, then I would have been right in my prediction last week that Bitcoin went up. So please buy Bitcoin. It's never too late. Joshua Shigala. Hey, um, uh, you know, this is, this is why the importance of, uh, of dollar cost averaging or gold cost averaging in my in my uh, in, in the Voltoro world, is uh, is really the way to go. You know, uh, these these analysts like Ben, uh, like Dan said, uh, are always doing the same thing. If you if you watch every single analyst, they're like, you know, ah, if we see this reach that and test it again, we will go up. But if we see this and that, it will go down, probably just as much as like it's always at the end of watching the video. You're always like. I, I, I'm not any wiser at all. The the thing with the thing with trading, like if you want to be a trader, really, what you're looking for is not it's definitely going up, definitely going down, and this is why they do that. It's more about like, okay, the chance is like forty five percent that it'll go down, and fifty five percent that it'll go up, according to you know all sorts of triangles and squares and squiggly lines. And, and that's what you want to try to trade on is that tiny percentage difference. And you'll probably lose most of the time, uh, but you'll sometimes win. So, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. But it's it's a kind of a bit of a slap in the face, that article. I mean, why, <laughs> why even publish that article? What's the point of it? What is it like? It's either going to go down 10 grand or 20 or up to like, all right. Whatever. It's a competition for the largest range. And we all know that the true and only predictor of Bitcoin is right here. And it's correct 100% of the time. Yeah. Ben Ark, 
Go ahead. Uh, for their readership, they, they've got to publish these articles. Um, I think everyone, when they first start, you know, getting into Bitcoin and maybe buy a little Bitcoin, a little bit of Bitcoin, they'll often just Google the Bitcoin price and they'll just look for articles which talk about the Bitcoin price. So uh, there's a big demand for for readership there. Which obviously, it's intensely boring and uh, it goes up. It's got a limited supply, huge increase in demand because the technology is amazing and we all know that. Um, and it's still, you know, a very nuanced and underused technology. Uh, and then occasionally we have some wild cards, some of them baked in, such as um, uh, the uh, the halvenings, uh, halvening events, which obviously have a big impact on price and supply. And then some of them which aren't baked in, some of them which are unforeseen, such as the Elon Elon Musk. That means someone just uh, placed a bet there. I uh, hope, hope you won. Make sure you click on the link in your wallet. Uh, some of them unforeseen, like Elon Musk tweeting out, uh, which can affect the price dramatically. So I, the, the stock to flow ratio thing, I mean, it's such a wide channel. Oh, you lost. It's such a wide channel that um uh it's like you lost, mate. <laughs> that they're um that they're, they're always uh yeah, they're always gonna be right in one way or the other. But yeah, it's it's a pointless article. It's you know 30k by the end of the year, 100 k by the you 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 you're hedging your bets there, aren't you, by following those two different traders' advice. Yeah, but it yeah, yeah. it goes up in value because it's really good technology and there's you know not enough people are using it and it's gonna continue to go up in value because of that. Um Buy it, hold it for five years. Don't do anything with it. Don't try and trade it. And then, you know, if you've bought a decent amount, like you know, ten grand's worth, then you'll probably be able to retire and whatever you make. So, uh, so yeah, buy it, hold it for five years, and don't do anything with it. That's my advice. Gabriel D. Vine, it's the price of Bitcoin. Obviously, we've never discussed this before. This is my first time talking about the price of Bitcoin, and uh, you know, this is amazing. That that thing slapping you, Ben. I mean, that was hilarious. What? That's that's incredible that you just set that up to automatically slap you in the face when somebody bets. That's that's genius, and I love the uh, the price ticker there uh, surging up today a little bit after yesterday's correction of three and a half percent. Yeah, uh, and to answer why this article exists, um, yes, it's meaningless. But uh, online magazines are uh, content mills. They make their money by getting clicks and having eyeballs on the ads. I should know. So, uh, yeah, I'm sticking by my, uh, my prediction from the last show that we did, which is $425,000 per Bitcoin, 2021 peak and a 90% correction or 85% correction after that. And I do agree with, uh, what's his face? Um, the guy in the article, uh, the S2F model guy, uh, that we're looking at, a, like a hundred thousand ish. That's my bear market price. So like a like 90, 80, 110, 120, somewhere around there for like the bear market of 22 to 23. Martin Wishmare, your thoughts. It's a typical coin telegraph article. They took a tweet and they, they just made an entire article around it. Um, I saw a retweet from Plan B where he linked to the podcast where there was this analyst explaining that uh, there's diminishing returns and it takes longer for a bull run to uh, you know to pan out and but he also said that you know he, he basically just had two data points so if you like make a prediction based on two data points it's like you know nonsense in is nonsense out so I really I, I, I really don't know what to think about it, but it, Plan B had its stock to flow. Then it came stock to flow uh, version two. And then it was stock to flow uh, FX or something like that. Um, and the original stock to flow prediction or, you know, the, the model uh, predicted a price of 50K uh, per Bitcoin in December 2021. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if that will actually, you know, pan out that way. I, I always thought the, the 100 was a bit bullish, but 50K at the end of the year. Yeah, sounds reasonable. I hope it will be higher, of course. And, uh, uh, but uh, as, as Josh said, all these, these analysts are all like, you know, it's like going to a fortune teller on a fair. And uh, at World Crypto Network, the only indicator we trust is this um, magic eight ball. So, you know, we don't need those analysts. And it's almost time to hear from that incredible ball, the 
prognosticator of prognosticators, predictor of predictors. But first, we have to ask you, Dan Eve, higher or lower? Higher. Gabriel Devine. We're going higher. We're gonna we're gonna break the uh, recent high of fifty and a half or whatever that was. Oh yeah. Ben Ark ducking the slapping machine. Yeah, higher, higher. The uh, and you can just see just in our show right now the price is is rocketing up. There's lots of people buying and it's moving the price a lot. So, yeah, higher. Joshua Shigala. <sighs> Going lower, lower, way lower. No, fucking higher, lower. Maybe it's not going to stand still. That's for sure. Martin Wishmayer. Uh, I think we'll go sideways for a while. You know, we're trading within this like narrow, narrow bend. I will probably go sideways for a while. Sideways. And now we will ask the ball, the predictor of predictors. This is the only thing you need to trust. So these are the only truth. Will the price of Bitcoin be higher this time next week? Most likely. Most likely. Which again, you know what Thomas, we need, we need great... mad bitcoins on another tour because <laughs> when you go on a European tour, that's when Bitcoin really, really makes moves. That's what's wrong. How, Just no mad. Tour. How long? How long has the eight ball been around? It's been six years, hasn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, and ever since we lost all the other chart predictors, we replaced them. We got this one. Never talks back. <laughs> doesn't say anything political at all. Like I have no idea if this eight ball is a terrorist, supports terrorists, anything like that. <laughs> like it's completely... all terrorists <laughs> use eight balls, man. I know it's completely like and they'd wear shoes. Different... They'd have to get a different. <laughs> ball. Yeah, it's pretty epic having this magic. It's a good idea for an explosive device if you just have an eight ball and place it somewhere and put ex... some sort of explosive device, which is triggered when someone shakes it. Oh God! And then. Someone, and ever, whoever walks that into that really room is, is going to pick it up and shake it. Oh, That's the right. most terrible <laughs> thing I've ever heard. No more I do. That. We're, we're moving on. Oh, actually, we did. A, we needed to do a thumbs up round right there. Everyone was saying, yeah, "Come on, oh, thumbs up." Twenty-four people watching right now on on YouTube. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you could give us a retweet. We still yeah. have one guy who watches us on Twitch. He's like all by himself in all of Twitch. The only yeah. watching us. So shout out to that guy. Yeah, give us a, a thumbs up. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Twitcher, check out what Ben's doing here. Can you quickly explain what you're doing there, Ben, so that you know we go through the show understanding what's going I, on? I will gladly. So I got um I got <laughs> the, the price checker here and then I got a QR code there. That's uh a ga not gambling. You send me some Satoshis and I might give you some Satoshis back, maybe more. Uh, and the, the chance and the the of winning is I think it's 60 odd percent, and it's like a 1.5 multiplier. So it's a bit like uh, Satoshi's dice. Um uh, and that's kind of done in wallet, which is pretty cool. And uh, this is just a tip uh, QR code. And if you pay like a tip, then you'll trigger like an animation on the screen. Oh, this one also, if you make a bet, I think the minimum bet is 300 sats, then yeah, you'll trigger the, the slappy machine as well to slap me in the face. So you can <laughs> win Satoshi's and slap me in the face. What's not to do? <laughs> hey, so like, I just want to point out uh, for, for the people a little bit of history here. Is that when uh, when when Eric Voorhees released uh, Satoshi Dice, the big thing in, in the Bitcoin space was all about spam. This was this the invention of the spam transaction, where everyone would uh, uh, say, "Hey, this is," and there was this big debate: is there such a thing as spam transactions? And um, because half the people were like, "No, there's no such thing as spam transactions. If you pay for a transaction, then that's a legitimate transaction." Uh, but of course, as the blocks got fuller and fuller. Uh, Satoshi Dice became less and less useful on, uh, you know, Bitcoin Core on chain. Uh, now it's, it's a Bcash thing, isn't it? Yeah, now that it's yeah. flipped over to Bitcoin Cash. But hey, like this is this is the true beauty of of what Ben's built here <laughs> is that uh, you have a chance of winning uh, a certain percentage. Well, like, I mean, uh, what's and even cool, and I didn't even mention, so that all of this is done in in the Allen Bit software. Um, and then uh, if you run the like, latest version of Alan Bits software, you can make these Satoshi dice games yourself. So if you're running a bar um, in the your urinal, you could have one of these QR codes on the wall. And while people are taking a piss, they can do a little bit of gambling, see if they can stack some sats. Yeah. And uh, one, one thing, Ben, is there because one of the big uh, inventions of Satoshi dice was provably fair, where, uh, you know, you could prove that yeah. the 
the thing was fair after the fact. Is that something that you're working on, or is you just it... you just have to gamble loads and then you know figure out whether I'm being provably whether I'm being fair or not. <laughs> you do the odds. Yeah, the, we could build all that in later on. I think this is like an MVP, you know, yeah. experimental jobby thing. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Cheers, Josh. Thanks for the shout out. Yep, and uh, we may be having additional technical difficulties today. I'm not sure where these are coming from. We're using our standard setup like usual. Uh, but it looks like restream it has dropped our YouTube connection. So uh, we'll just download this video and upload it later. So if you're watching us on YouTube later, hi, give us a thumbs up. But we're just going to move on to issue two. It's just way too hot in here. And the suit is too hot. Issue two, Bitcoin hash rate rebounds after China's mining operations were shut down. Everyone was afraid, Henny Penny, the sky is falling. China is banning all of Bitcoin mining, whatever will happen. It turns out that the mining machines moved overseas where their owners, shock, plug them back in and they're mining Bitcoin again. Yes, the Bitcoin hash rate has rebounded to its original numbers. It's almost as if nothing happened after China banned Bitcoin. Uh, Martin Wishmayer, China banned Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is still being mined. How is this possible? I think it's fantastic to see how resilient the network is to uh, to like uh, rogue state attacks, um, because um, you know it will not it will not be shut down by, by anyone. This is you know a, a large country like like country like China. Where they, 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 I believe, a majority of all hash power was concentrated. It just took what, what one or two months, and it, they're back again. So, it, 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 it will not stop. And the only way to stop Bitcoin, if is if all countries in the world would decide at the same time that they agree on that Bitcoin has to be stopped. And this is looking to be like, you know, very unlikely. And the more, longer it takes, the more unlikely it will be. So uh, yes, it's it's good to see. We didn't need the extra hash power, though. Um, I think Bitcoin was strong enough. But if there's like machines out there, um, it's better to use them. Because if all those machines would have been bought by a single actor, and then they would have been able to attack the Bitcoin network at the later stage. If they're back online now, that's fantastic. And I, it just shows how strong the network is compared to uh, most of the other. Joshua Shigala. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the Bitcoin network's far too over. I mean, it's not too over uh, secure, but it's really uh, like it can afford to lose half even. It just doesn't care. It'll just readjust the difficulty and get on with life. All these people that picked on it for uh, China, you know, banning uh, the mining, they didn't understand the whole concept. Like the whole thing is is game theoretically already thought out. Uh, so not, none of this matters. It just comes back up. Of course, if you have a piece of hardware that goes and finds rare numbers, you're not going to just stick it on the shelf. You're going to sell it uh, to someone that can plug it in. And, uh, and I, I don't even agree, Martin, with you that even if every country shut it down, because people would just run one miner that couldn't, they couldn't tell the difference between that miner. Uh, and, you know, I mean, sure, maybe large scale mining could be stopped, but one person could run one machine. And then that's already enough. The difficulty would just swap down, it would make it more attackable by a state that could turn on large scale mining to like, uh, destroy the network but even then i feel that the the people running nodes would switch to a different uh a different consensus hash and uh, just you know get on with life and just remove all of those asics out of the picture so it's so resilient it's unbelievable i love it i've loved it all these years i love it every every minute Josh, more. Josh I, I wasn't implying that it, that's that would be something that could happen i mean one thing that is certain is that the world as a whole has never agreed on a single thing. The first thing we all agreed on was that Bitcoin actually has value. 
yeah. and then having to agree on that we are going to shut Bitcoin down all of a sudden, all of, of all together. Yeah. That's never, gonna never happen. ever going to happen. So, you're right. So you're that's, right. yeah, you, 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 you're right. Also, that like you know, if if any like I have a miner here, it's old, it's dusty, but if all the miners would stop, I would fire it up again, and that would be the lone miner that would do all the Bitcoin transactions. So, yeah. Stop. <laughs> ben Ark, your thoughts on China and Bitcoin mining? Yeah, it's great. It's kind of setting another precedent again that, um, you know, if, if it happens that uh, a country has, because it's near on close to 50% of the mining uh, was in China, the hash rate it was like 47% or something. Um, and it just shows that if that happens and then the worry was that, um, you know, they could just switch mining on and off and uh, they could control the mining. But, you know, it, it clearly it just all fires up again in some other country. Um, uh, yeah, it's incredibly resilient. And yeah, those miners aren't going to be sat around long. They're going to be relocated and then powered up. Uh, and even with the, the Chinese miners, when the Chinese, mine, Chinese mining down, the hash rate down, um, Bitcoin's hash rate was still so incredibly high and Bitcoin was so incredibly secure. Uh, I think it dropped to like the same level as at the beginning of 2019 or something. So it was only, you know, dropped to a, a few years before hash rate wise. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's great to see. It's just great to see Bitcoin working exactly as it's supposed to work and being resilient as exactly as as resilient as it's supposed to be. And they could have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you kids and your Bitcoin. Ben, I can see the fly swatter just like almost moving it's got this like almost slap feeling so i should say actually because we're not live i suppose don't do this one because it won't do it trigger anything on the screen do this one do a little bit of gambling and I, I promise i'll sit in front of my computer and then when this video is like on youtube um i'll keep this powered on so occasionally i'll just get slapped in the face for no reason <laughs> that's awful man and we're still kind of live we're live on uh i don't know twitter and our one guy on twitch so there's like two people watching us but they'll watch all right we'll twitch boy nice hey, the reason why Push i in. did the shout out to twitch because this is perfect for twitch try to spread it to all your twitch mates trendy new pips to trip tri yeah. tri twitch i don't know how twitch works it's like discord it just confuses me it's too old all right gabriel divine your thoughts on the hash rate recovering after china banning can you hear me okay before I continue? Yeah. Great. I can you see me? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Loud and clear. Zoom is freaking out. Fantastic. Zoom is wigging out over here. Uh, yeah, I actually wanted to uh, circle back on um, Martin's comment about um, about the all the all the uh, companies. Uh, excuse me, all the countries coming together and banning. Uh, I agree with Joshua. Not only would that not work, actually, I think that. Uh, a worldwide ban on Bitcoin would just speed up its development. Um, after an initial, maybe slight set, setback in sort of institutional involvement, I think that uh, it would completely backfire and uh, make everybody just wake up that much quicker to government's um, fraud in central banking. So um, even a worldwide ban could stop Bitcoin. There, there's nothing that can stop Bitcoin. Um, me, or other than like, you know, on the meteor side slash, um, you know, supernova, but, um, you know, Gabriel, uh, are you that saying it, that we've invented that, that Satoshi invented a perpetual motion machine? Is that what you're saying? Definitely not. I'm definitely not saying that <laughs> I'm saying, uh, a robust, uh, technology protocol was created. That's all just anti-fragile <laughs> and robust, not perpetual motion. We are continuously putting a lot of energy into it, as uh, you know, uh, eco fake warriors like to point out. Uh, but um, <laughs> good question. The incentive situation, you know, that Joshua brought up, that that's a really important thing to consider. Uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, Thomas and some of our watchers will remember an uh, interview I did five years ago with Vinay Gupta. Um, and uh, he threw a tantrum on the show, lost his uh, composure. Uh, was yelling me down about China hosting the majority of the Bitcoin hash rate and what a huge danger that was, not only for, um, not only because uh, they could uh, kick, you know, shut it down at any time and reduce the hash rate, but also because somehow the miners being in China would be a threat to the Bitcoin protocol. He wasn't 
he just yelled at me instead of answering my uh, calm questions about exactly how that could be achieved. And um, here we see both of those predictions um, turning out to be extremely false as I knew at the time and anybody, anybody thinking could know that at the time. Um, not only could China not exert any power through, the, I mean, I'm sure they were, I'm sure the CCP was involved in the Bitmain uh, 2017 debacle. Um, and I'm hoping that they lost a lot of money by betting on Bcash. But um, uh, the other threat that um, a sudden decrease in the hash rate due to the um, banning of Bitcoin mining in the country could somehow hurt Bitcoin uh, has also been proven false. So it's, it's wonderful to see the, once again, as you pointed out, game theory at play. Bitcoin was created with these incentives. And uh, I kind of want to point out that not only are there technical internal incentives for the Bitcoin protocol and systemic uh, design itself, in this case, that's you know an obvious uh, um, case, but also external incentives is one of the things that keeps us Bitcoiners inspired. Um, you know the effect of the Bitcoin uh, protocol on everybody's lives, on society at large, on the economy. Um, these are uh, external. Um, higher orders of effect that Bitcoin has on the world. So not only is it well designed within, but also without. I just want to follow up on what Gabriel was saying. And this is a good reason why you can't just fiat and like let it be done and advance to the future. So many of those articles where they're like, Bitcoin uses too much energy because I multiplied times you know 20 and now it's more. And what Vinay would probably say things like, when Bitcoin's big and it's really important and you really need it, China's going to censor your transactions politically. China's going to attack the network because it's in their backyard. China's going to have a big switch and they'll just pull it and turn your Bitcoin off. And now here we are only a few years later and already China's not a problem. The mining And America problem. would never do that. Well, the same thing. I mean, it's the same thing. It's going to be distributed. We're going to solve that problem. And I think it's just something we're to come along. I also like that the only thing that Bitcoin has to worry about is the eventual heat death of the universe. When everything cools off, that's when the hash rate will go down. Dan, Eve, your thoughts on the Bitcoin hash rate? Well, I'm sad that we didn't see more of the, those crazy uh, mining death spiral. I, I haven't heard that enough in 2021. Like those articles were, were they're all the rage back in the day. And you'd think that, that you know, this is uh, the most significant drop that we've seen. Uh, uh, obviously, the, that article references uh, uh, blockchain.com's um, stats, but um uh, bit info charts report slightly differently and the reason why i'm continuing to use those guys is because they just delisted bsv <laughs> because it takes up screen time you know on bit info charts you don't need bitcoin sv on there um but uh, some some interesting like stats i, I was just looking at uh, you know just uh, in, in general um so obviously we we're about at the moment we're about uh 66% back to from the all time high so bit info charts listed that as about 198 exa hashes and it, it went to a, to a drop a drop down to 68 uh, back at like 131 which is you know it, which is back, back pretty much you know before it, it started to boom because it really did boom uh to, you know but just before the the drop um but it just really does show the the resilience of of bitcoin and the fact that you know even there weren't really many scary stories of a potential 51 percent attack it was like it was on my mind at the time but i didn't actually see many stories trying to like you know capitalize on that that fear mongering which is quite which is quite good i think that maybe the this is a, a bit of a point um a turning point for for, for certain press that they're realizing that some of these buzzwords aren't working anymore. Like, you know, it, it almost like the Bitcoin's dead meme, you know, that, that, that the number of people saying Bitcoin's going to die, you know, that was that old chart of people saying it, Bitcoin's going to die. And, you know, they, they, those people are wising up now because you're just looking stupid, especially after 11 years of the, what, the most solid network uptime on earth. Like you're looking very stupid if you say it's going to die now. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it just, like everyone else has said, it proves Bitcoin's resilience and, and it's good that the mining, um, the mining hardware is being, being relocated, it's being decentralized even, even further. And that's, that benefits the ecosystem immensely. It, it you know, builds on that pillar of decentralization, um, you know, the core value of Bitcoin and the fact that it's reducing the element of control from one particular or a few particular parties. So I'm, I'm game for it, yeah. That's, uh, I think it's, I think it's wonderful. Bitcoin, you're wonderful. Moving on to the exit question. 
Bitcoin uses so much energy. It uses less energy than all the PlayStations and always on devices. It uses less energy than the banking system. It uses less energy than the gold bullion system. Yet some country will soon line up to ban Bitcoin. What country will ban Bitcoin mining next because it takes too much power? Martin Wishmer. Oh, I think Iran will ban it again because they recently banned it because of the electricity. Now they allow it, provided you pay the government uh, your Bitcoin, and they'll ban it again soon because you know it's the only way to get money out. So uh, you know, rogue states will be at it, or you know, the tree hugger states like you know, where is it? Greta girl come from? They'll they'll ban it too because bad, bad. How dare you? No one seems to know anymore. They all say Scandinavia. Uh, Josh Shigala, who will ban Bitcoin mining next? Uh, um, I mean, it's sort of not answering this question, but in terms of China banning the mining was part of the whole sort of releasing their own central bank uh, digital currency, I think. It's not really got to do with the green thing because they've got plenty of, uh, uh, plenty of surplus power that's just sort of sitting there. But what they don't really realize is that, yeah, you can ban like mining, which is easy to spot, like, proof of work but there's you know in the in the entire crypto space uh, of competing currencies and competing technologies you've got so many that are running you know hybrid proof of work proof of stake and then you've got proof of stake stuff happening so there's all sorts of things happening this is this isn't it's just useless and you can tell this is typical bureaucrat crap they're like we must ban this. Uh, that'll stop it. Like, why? Huh? Really? You know? So uh, it, it's just funny. It's funny that they try and, um, and uh, it's, it's completely idiotic. But, uh, you know, I don't know how many other people need to do the same thing to realize that they're not doing anything but inconveniencing people. It's probably one of the few industries that are booming right now and they want to ban it. Like, like, you know, sorry, there's people out of a job left, right and center, and you want to crush the one of the few industries that are actually working. Uh, it's, it's just like, people need to get a grip. Let's keep the 12 libertarians who are watching excited and use their favorite phrase, statists got a state, right? Uh, yeah, ben, Ark, yeah. ben Ark, your thoughts on who will ban Bitcoin mining next? Yeah, Josh is 100% right. That is the, the countries who are developing their own digital, digitally native currencies, they're going to be the ones who are going to um, uh, experiment with banning Bitcoin. Uh, experiment because they'll just end up using it at some point anyway and allowing it because obviously it's such important technology. Um, but I think, and this will probably segue into, I think it's the next topic. Uh, I think uh, really we really want to keep our eye on the countries who haven't got central banks. Um, who aren't developing their own digital native currency, uh, which will be centralized using their central bank. We want to look at those smaller countries um, who need something sort of some sort of digital currency, which they could develop themselves um, and will probably be utilizing all the decentralized uh, technology which we have built into Bitcoin and uh, the payment rails with something like uh, Lightning as well. Um, so, yeah, so it, it, I think you'll you'll find uh, the, the, the country, like a country like China who wants to bring their own, out their own digital currency, they will probably try and keep their monopoly on uh, monetary control by banning uh, Bitcoin or, or, or limiting people's exposure to Bitcoin. But it's futile and it'll only be temporary, just like China's, you know, ban on mining will only be temporary. It'll eventually, it'll, you know, and uh, yeah, Bitcoin does use a hell of a lot of electricity, uh, a lot of energy, and it has got a high carbon footprint, but we all know it's ebbing slowly towards uh, more renewable usage because that's obviously cheaper and um also uh, the social scalability like if i'm just passing a bitcoin on chain to thomas then uh, i can do that you know if i want to pay the fees and you know i, I want to take up that block space um but it's an incredibly inefficient use of uh, uh you know the the, the truth ledger the uh planetary truth ledger which we have and we have more efficient ways of, of using that now and we'll explore more efficient ways of using it and that's where we end up with all that social scalability where we can build lots of different services and platforms on top of bitcoin and that's when obviously it become incredibly efficient much more efficient than um for well, the the monetary uh, mechanisms and networks we have now but then also all the other things which should be built on top of bitcoin for for transferring you know ownership rights whatever um whatever uh, so yeah so it's 
it's, yeah, it's, it's the countries which uh, want to bring out their own digital native currencies, they're going to be the ones who are going to explore banning for a while. Waiting. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw you, Ben, before you're like trying to, you know, open your eyes and try to stay awake. Surprise that I quickly, you. I set a bet to wake you up. Yeah. Gabriel, D. Vaughn, your thoughts on what country will ban Bitcoin mining next? Australia. Australia. Very political pick with all the lockdowns and the COVID uh, happening there right now. Everyone claims it's a prison state. Is this a prison state? No, this is shop.worldcryptonetwork.com where you can get t-shirts and mugs. I have to go turn the other ones back on, but we've got our new no profit t-shirts and mugs. You can buy anything you want and we'll make no profit. We've got Hal Finney mugs, Hal Finney shirts. We've got it all at shop.worldcryptonetwork.com. What happened to the, uh, the Trezors Don't Float shirt? I think that the company defaults to setting the things to kind of expire unless you oh. click the right button and i think they expired so i have to go. you have to like re-upload it again because that's a cool shirt i think uh, i have one i didn't know it is a rare and limited edition now but uh, the bitcoin not bombs and the uh, trezor shirts are both like super they stay good in the law and the wash too that's how it works with collectibles you have to buy when the opportunity is prevented presented moving on to issue three cuba becomes the latest country to authorize and regulate cryptocurrencies like bitcoin yes cuba's government said on thursday that it will recognize and regulate cryptocurrencies for payments a resolution in the official gazette of the country's central bank will set rules for such currencies and determine how to license providers of related services within cuba it comes just as El Salvador is preparing to officially recognize the use as Bitcoin, as it seems all of Latin and Southern Amer South America are getting very excited about Bitcoin. Josh Shigala, your thoughts on Cuba becoming the latest country to recognize Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, just like uh, just like we started off. You know, Bitcoin, it's funny, most technologies, they start off from the top down. So they get, uh, you know, the wealthiest have the, the the Tesla to start with, and then they get more and more people buying them. So they have money to build cheaper and cheaper and get bigger machines and single die cast things. And now they can pump them out for the masses. But Bitcoin is one of the few technologies that started from the bottom up, from the grassroots, uh, just with people and freaks buying it and libertarians and just nut job socialists that want to like, uh, you know, so like it started off down the bottom and then it slowly uh, scaled up to the institutions now that, you know, uh, are piling. And, and then next obviously is countries. What's fascinating though, usually these, uh, these hype cycles have happened after a boom bust and the next boom happens from uh, the next sort of uh, iteration of, of Hello. The top drop down. This has got to be one of those things like uh, Mercury is rising, where all of the technology just breaks at the same time. I like the way Josh, Josh's internet can only handle so much of Josh talking before it just crashes. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's just like, it's just like, oh no, more libertarian rants and raves. Hey, um, no, but basically, usually the hype cycles drop before the next asset, uh, next class of uh, individuals or or, or, um, or institutions come on board. So, you know, it dropped, institutions came up, we had the next bubble, and I thought it would have been like a little while, like in four years time when the next halving that countries, but uh, this Elvis, El Salvador move really, uh, really basically sped up everything. But I think also COVID, uh, everyone injecting money like crazy and printing it like mad to stimulate the economies worldwide is also speeding things up and accelerating stuff. So um, I, I think I'm very, very bullish that, hey, Cuba will do it, then the next person, then the next country, the next country, the next country. It's it's just a, it's a black hole and it's going to suck everything in. Ben, Ark. I think you lot speculated on this show back in the day, you know, that it was uh, people adopting it and then it was going to be the companies and 
um, financial institutions and then eventually countries and you'd speculate on which countries are going to adopt it and blah, blah, blah. So we're starting to see it rolled out, uh, the technology rolled out to these different countries, which is great. Um, the US uh, embargo against Cuba has been... Um, uh as a was has been uh, condemned by the un since i think like the early 90s i think it's 92 um and the embargo restrictions increased during uh 2021 and i think in the article it said that the gdp of cuba was affected by 11 percent because of this and a lot of that is that um you can't it's, us companies are prevented and um uh, people are prevented from sending money basically to to cuba so you don't have that that remittance uh, which makes up a huge portion of all the countries around the US. Um, it makes up a huge portion of their GDP, like in El Salvador, I think it's 70%, which is incredible. Um, so that's why those embargoes are, are in fact condemned, because uh, they, they, they break international law, uh, the US acting like that. So this is a way for, um, as Bitcoin becomes more adopted and more people know how to use Bitcoin, and obviously the, all these Cubans who want to send money back home and all these businesses who want to interact with Cuban businesses can do that kind of under the radar and through this uh, censorship resistant uh, pseudo anonymous technology, which we have called Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, these, these Central American countries who are trying to wiggle out of the US uh, imperial control uh, in one way or another, then Bitcoin is absolutely ideal for it. Um, and uh, as I said before, I think, you know, Cuba has a central bank, but it's, you know, it's not without its problems and uh, it's, um, uh, you know, susceptible to corruption. And uh, a lot of these smaller countries, which uh, have central banks, which are more likely to be corrupted or have don't have central banks at all, are just gonna, you know, just gonna switch to Bitcoin um, and building, they'll probably build their own stable coins or, or uh, stable soft currencies on top of Bitcoin as well, that's possible. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's great to see that's this stage of, 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 of Bitcoin's evolution happening. And I think Josh is right that it's the, everyone becoming digitally native much quicker than we thought because uh, of COVID, which uh, has accelerated all of that. So we're in like Bitcoin 2025 right now, I think, not Bitcoin 2021. Um, we've been catapulted a good few years into the future. Um, so yeah, great to see um, and wish them good luck. Gabriel, D. Vine. I don't think this announcement is uh, all that uh, momentous or um, significant in itself. Um, this is just a pay, kind of a paperwork thing, as far as I can tell. Um, however, your guys are right in calling it out as a possible next step towards, uh, you know, something more like El Salvador, where they actually adopt Bitcoin as an official currency for the country in some fashion um, by the authorities there. Um, but as such, it's not that momentous. Um, but I would like to comment on what Ben was just saying about our predictions on this particular channel and in general, my uh, comments about Bitcoin. Uh, I am not, I mean, yes, we've been, that's exactly what we've been saying over the years. And our predictions are, of course, terrific and have uh, basically all come to pass. Um, but I don't agree with you guys that uh, I was looking at the mid 20s for government adoption. 21 was really a target year for me because of um, really in 2016, when the white paper for lightning came out, I thought that it would take a couple of years to create alpha software and then about three to build up enough client side software in order to be able to use lightning and sure enough that's exactly what happened uh early this year which is the five-year anniversary of the white paper release um you know we saw the things really began to heat up and where human beings on the ground that don't know anything about uh things other than just apps on their smartphone don't know anything about technology they're farmers whoever in third world countries anywhere they could start using bitcoin easily and smoothly and that happened. And so of course, everything now is flooding in because now Bitcoin is uh, becoming a medium of exchange very quickly. And um, I really saw 2021 as the big year when that would launch up and that um, things would begin to move a lot faster. So this is actually in line with my expectations. Dan, Eve. Well, I think it, the, the the fact that a central bank's giving it giving it the seal of approval, uh, you know, albeit from a, um, a you know a much smaller country, it, it you know lends credence it gets uh, to to Bitcoin being a legitimate 
you know, uh, a legitimate like money source, right? So, sorry, source of money, source of money, a legitimate money. Um, you know, it's a stamp of authority. Uh, now, may, you know, maybe obviously the, the, the US doesn't sort of uh, get along with Cuba so well still, uh, but there will be people thinking, right, well, you know, the, 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 there may be a bit, you know, elements of corruption in, in some of these countries, but, you know, that there, there, there is obviously a benefit to having Bitcoin. And um, the fact that it can be rolled out in, in countries that are, are not so, you know, not known for being technolog technologically advanced, right? It scuppers the argument that, um, that, you know, Bitcoin is this complicated thing that people can't use properly. But no, no, now farmers, it's been rolled out to farmers who can, you know, just have a phone and an app and then bang, they're done. They're set up and the infrastructure is there so they can switch out into fear if they need it or want to, et cetera. So um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's just another string to the bow of, of Bitcoin. Um, and it's only going to snowball, right? The, the, once these these countries have got successful implementations of, of Bitcoin, especially with Lightning Network and, um, you know, taking uh, taking strain off the main chain, providing, you know, Lightning fast transactions, etc. Uh, they're really proving the case, again, against the arguments like you can't use it to pay for coffee or, you know, that sort of stuff. It takes too long to confirm. So all these, every, one by one, all these arguments that are being broken down, the dominoes are just falling. Um, so I think it's cool. It's just turning into a, a, a monetary arms race, right, between uh, between the countries that, that are sat there, and there's, you know, everyone's going to be looking over their shoulder. You know, they're they're, they're are sat at the what is it, the 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 da Dasmo? What's that? What's that place? Called? Davos, Davos, that whatever. One of the big things they're all going to be talking about Bitcoin, right? It's uh, it's 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 going to be on the the, the 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 you know the lips of basically every big leader out there because as much as they're trying to dismiss it. Uh, there are going to be people that are, are probably kind of like sat there going, you know, trying to shill it, right? There's going to be someone, in, like a few people in Davos who are like, mate, come on, like to, to the Boris Johnson or whoever these world leaders and be like, are you, you, you serious? Like, come on, guys, like, you know, get into the 20th century. Um, I agree with Ben about things being catapulted, though, right? We've we've gone, you know, things like you know Zoom usage, etc., went up massively. All the the working from home, uh, you know, the, the fact that companies have, have a lot of them have U-turned and 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 companies my friends work for who are like very against working from home and now like wow, this this really works for us. So that's really helped uh, with Bitcoin adoption because it's putting us fully into that virtual world. Uh, the stimmy checks, hmm, stimmy, yeah, they help definitely with Bitcoin, you know, uh, being be bought that's for sure um but yeah i, I think uh, I, I i think it's i think it's great i went to cuba once beautiful place absolutely amazing i was the most fascinating thing is is like all the, the, the like this or so many of the cars not all of them like they're old school like american cars from like you know the 70s and stuff they're like it's i think even in the picture in the article is they're like um it's yeah it's just like a, a really cool place. not 70s 50s 50 sorry 50s yeah you're Bef right before like the revolution in 59 the gangster sort of ones yeah yeah i think it's a, yeah, definitely a beautiful place and if you get out there uh i'd say pay it visit martin wishmare and I'm, I'm very excited about these new developments even though they seem a little bit non not so significant people use it anyway but the fact that government starts um, uh, endorsing use of bitcoin not the other cryptocurrencies because if they start making their own shit coins i'm uh, i'm signing off but uh, that they like adopt bitcoin because it does make sense um many of those countries have been using the us dollar as a sort of like backup reserve currency or currency um it is for a country it's for an economy it's really bad if you can't control your own money so if you're de already depending on somebody else's money and you're depending on them doing the right thing, uh, meaning like don't print it like crazy, um, then you have little to no control over your own economy. So if you already have no control over your own economy, then why not select Bitcoin? Because at least we know there's 21 million Bitcoins. There will not be more bit ma uh, made. Uh, as, as, as Dan said, the infrastructure, it's, it's, it's there. It's working. It's a piece of cake to implement. Just maybe make a nice branded wallet for, for like the official wallet. But it, there's nothing stopping people from like transferring to their own wallets. It's just, uh, um, it, it, it makes sense. And, and I think the next countries that will adopt Bitcoin will also be countries that are using the US dollar or another foreign currency as their main currency because their own currency is yeah keeps slapping Ben, <laughs> but uh, that they use um 
that they use uh, uh, any any country that doesn't have their own currency or their own currency is weak and therefore they rather use another currency uh, is is a potential candidate next and i i like the 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 the, the little quote in the article that said um, yes but the government will be monitoring and patrolling it i mean Good luck with that. But, you know, they'll figure that one out. They'll probably have some infrastructure and stuff, but uh, it, it gives the people a little bit more freedom. And I think it's good for the people in Cuba because this way they can at least like save a bit for the future, because right now there's no point in saving dollars or their local pesos because it's devaluated in like, you know, it, it loses its value very fast. And, and with Bitcoin, well, up till now, everybody who holds it for four years or longer is in uh, and big is in, in the plus so yeah good for cuba it is funny martin how governments used to be very powerful and everyone say oh the government's going to turn against that or oh this country doesn't like that but now with bitcoin you just kind of shrug your shoulders like what can they really do especially a small country but even a big country like china or the us like we were saying earlier unless they all agree at the same time let's stop this thing or if they turn off the internet um this thing just keeps going and going and going. Uh, as we've been talking about for the exit question, El Salvador is working on ad adopting Bitcoin and launching it in the next few weeks. Will it be a big deal, life-changing for the people of El Salvador, everyone on the street using Bitcoin, a uh, complete transformation, a cybernetic future, or will it be hardly any deal at all, life goes on for El Salvador? Let's go to Joshua Shigala. Will El Salvador be a big deal? I really hope it will, uh, but they need to implement Lightning Network. Without that, it's it's a it doesn't work. So, uh, implement Lightning, have Lightning working, and uh, and hopefully accelerate that side of it. Um, yeah, otherwise it's not going to work at scale. They, they, they say they have lots of Bitcoin ATMs. Let's go to Martin. Do you think they have Bitcoin ATMs or Lightning ATMs? Um, Josh alluded. I, I saw uh, a couple of pictures of a locally produced. Uh, well, you know, I'm biased, but I call them like monstrosities. Um, uh, uh, General Bytes, I know what clients of us also putting machines there. So we are, we are gradually seeing the ATM side of things, you know, gather steam. Uh, we've been supporting Lightning since, I don't know, for years now. I stopped counting how many years. So if, if they want to enable it, perfect. Um, there is a custodial wallet that's being developed in cooperation, I think, with Athena uh, or one of the other ATM operators. It's going to be like very centralized thing. I mean, it's running on Amazon web services and all, but it, it, it's not the only way to use it. People can use their own wallet. People are free to select their own wallet. Um, I do hope it will you know, have a gradual start because uh, from what I've heard, there's um, people are a bit afraid of it because it's like so new and they know th nothing about it. Uh, banks don't know how to deal with it. They ask questions like, should we start mining? I mean, really? No, you don't have to start mining. But the fact that they even ask those questions shows the limited knowledge available right now. So they should like, you know, use national TV to, to have introductions and maybe get um, um, uh, Andreas Antonopoulos there with his like with a reality show where they do transactions and stuff and gradually educate the public and therefore I hope it will be a slow start but the risk of a slow start uh, might also backfire and that media will say see it's been bullshit all along it's not working it's not working as uh, but you know they think a slow start just gradually you know gradually then suddenly so I think that's the best approach for uh, for El Salvador. I think Martin's actually absolutely right here, and he's predicting the future a little bit. I think if this fails, and it might kind of, and by fail, I mean have very little change in the people's lives. If it has very little change in their lives, it'll be because of a lack of education. Uh, the campaign needed, like he's saying, a television campaign, actors, stars, over and over again, over and over again, just cementing how to use this. How many times... Did they show you how to swipe the credit card? They used to have the big machine. Now they have the chip and pin. Uh, again, they take so many examples, so many shows, just casually using it, casually using it, just put it in the people's minds. I don't think they have that. I don't think they have the preparation. I think it's being dropped on them. And uh, it's interesting to think about the importance we put on wallets and what kind of wallets they use. But the actual users, 
they don't care at all. I remember back in the day, we were all like, what wallet do you use? We ask everybody, they're like, local Bitcoins. I just keep my money in where it came from. You know, they never looked out that there was Airbits and so many other uh, offerings and ways to hold their own keys and such. They're just like, ah, local Bitcoins, Coinbase, you know, that's almost cool. maybe, maybe Restream has an option to stream live to El Salvador TV very soon. And then we can like educate the people via the World Crypto Network. It is the strangest thing where the, the, the pipes are there, like local cable, all these things, they probably have it. We could record stuff for them. They could dump it out there uh, and maybe translate it, of course. Um, but I, I just I just don't think it's being done. I think it's a, an even larger thing to do than accepting Bitcoin is educating the people about Bitcoin. Yet, if you don't do that, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, let's go to Dan, Eve, your thoughts on El Salvador, big deal or little deal? I think uh, I think it's a, it's a big deal, right? Like it, it's it's the first kind of it's the first of its kind. It's it's a bit of a, a bit of a test, um, uh, pilot test, I suppose, of the, the rollout of Bitcoin uh, on a, on a mass scale by a country who are choosing to do it, not like by the by the people pushing it forward. Um, so I think it, it I think it is a big deal. Uh, but on, on just going back to that uh, the Cuban article, I thought was quite funny. The, the, the one of the, the comments in this, which says the resolution says the central bank can authorize the use of cryptocurrencies for reasons of socioeconomic interest, but with the state assuring that their operations are controlled. And then it says it also explicitly noted that operations could not involve legal illegal activities. I just like the way they had to state that specifically, like you, you, yeah, right, we, we get, you can have Bitcoin, but none of none of the illegal stuff, please. Um, but I, going back again, sorry, because uh, I fixed, I made, made a note about the fact that um, the, the the impact of say El Salvador, which was you know dependent on the on the dollar, um, when you have a, a bottomless fiat money pit that's sort of printing that just happens, uh, I didn't think about the the, the secondary impact on or, or, or on countries like El Salvador that don't benefit from the dollar going directly back into their infrastructure. They're just like hodlers of the dollar that don't get the benefit of all the money being pumped back into America by printing. So it's it's it, you know it's disastrous really having a reliance on another currency that's just printed out of thin air. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm all for Cuba and El Salvador um, making a making a run for it basically, and and detaching themselves and becoming uh, financially self sovereign. T, T. Currency control is very important to these countries, and without a local currency, they are kind of without a sword in a video game. Ben Ark, your thoughts on El Salvador? Yeah, that's hundred percent correct, Thomas. Um... But I'm not sure that they have the same soft currency functions uh, with Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is, of course, a hard currency. Uh, remittance, remittance, remittance. Uh, so much of this country's GDP is remittance, and if you have three to seven percent of your, you know, the remittance going to Western Union and other such companies, um, then Bitcoin is a very attractive just tool for getting money into the country without having to pay those fees. Um, the feedback on the ground for people using Bitcoin is it's incredible and the payment rails are fantastic. You know, there's that video of the guy paying for his electricity bill just by scanning a QR code. You know, they, 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 they now have a better financial infrastructure than I have when I want to pay for some bill. You know, I have to phone up and so on. So, um, uh, yeah, they could just scan a QR code and pay because you have that remittance as well. You know, granny wants to pay her electricity bill, she can't afford it. And then, you know, her son who's in the US can send some money and then instantly she's got it in a wallet and then boom, she can pay for the, the, the bill. Fantastic. But there, there are limitations. So, you know, people in El Salvador are particularly well off and they can't afford to speculate. A lot of them are on subsistence living. And if you're if you earn, you know, 100, 200 dollars a month and then uh, that's halved because Elon Musk put some tweet out, that's not particularly useful. And the US dollar is, in fact, better form of currency for medium of exchange if you're facing that with that kind of scenario. And that sucks. So um, uh, I've been speaking to people. Um, uh, I've, I've spoken to um, a Blockstream. I've spoken to uh, um, uh, a couple of a couple of people at the uh, 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 what's it called the blockchain uh, um, conference we had in in Majorca. Um, and there's lots of people who are interested in the the concept of you know a sovereign soft currency stablecoin built on Bitcoin. So say if you think of Liquid Network. You could have uh, a liquid network fork, um, but instead of the federation, so obviously liquid network is federated, instead of it being federated by um, financial institutions, it's federated by, I don't know, boroughs in your country. Um, and each of them has a key and they, they all sign transactions and they, they, if they need to, 
they can uh, um, they can create more tokens uh, for uh, fiscal stimulus and for digging themselves out of you know some sort of horrible financial disaster, um, which are the, the the useful functions of a soft currency. But all too often, obviously, they get corrupted. Um, so I do believe that a lot of these countries, like El Salvador, for example, they're going to fall in love with the payment rails. They're going to absolutely hate the instability, and they're going to explore how to make something which is stable. Uh, if you look in Ethereum land, they have the the die. Uh, that has some really interesting um, ways of keeping its peg using uh, arbitrage opportunities between, you know, buying and selling the the, the, the token back to the, the DAI vault. Uh, you could do a similar thing on Liquid. You could have a token where you have a vault and in that vault, people send Bitcoin um, uh, and in exchange for that, they get, you know, El Salvador dollars. And then if it, you know, goes up or down, you can sell it, your El Salvador dollars back to the vault and you can make a profit on the Bitcoin or, um, and that will help keep the peg. So I think all of that stuff is going to get explored. And I think we should be encouraging countries um, and projects to be exploring these things on Bitcoin, because if they don't do it in Bitcoin, they're going to do it on something else and it's going to be a house built on sand. Um, uh, but yeah, have a, and the great thing about a liquid network solution as, as well, obviously, is you have uh, the ability to have a lightning network on top of that. It's interoperable with lightning network. And then you can do some crazy atomic swap stuff. Um, so for the user, they would just be switching between our Salvador dollars or Bitcoin on their lightning wallet. And it would be very, very seamless and all the technology would work. You know, uh, I know from our um, own experience with LM Bits, we have a couple of companies which are rolling out literally just the we have an extension LM bits to make a point of sale and they're rolling out that point of sale to restaurants, to hairdressers, to whatever shops, corner shops. And then um, they, people there, you know, the, the vendors can then accept Bitcoin over lightning network. And then after a couple of days, the company just gives them cash for the amount of Bitcoin, which they've, they've taken and they just charge a small percentage for that, uh, for offering that service. So yes, they, they, they think the being able to, pay through QR codes and all this other stuff is cool, but uh, at the end of the day, they, they want something which is stable, which is why I think you'll end up with a lot of hacks uh, converting Bitcoin into USD. So these companies and businesses and people can accept Bitcoin if they have to, but then uh, if they do accept Bitcoin, that they can then have it as, a, as something which is more stable and the USD, you know, despite all the printing is stable, much more stable than uh, Bitcoin is. Um, so it's exciting to see these companies building on top of our software, which we're using, but I do think we need to really talk seriously about how do we give them a better medium of exchange experience where there is stability, because it's there is technology out there to do this in a way which is federated or decentralized and um, is corruption resistant and can be rolled out by a country which doesn't have a central bank. So we need to explore it very, very seriously. I think Ben's right. After the project fails because of a lack of education, they'll blame volatility and print their own coin. Gabriel D. Vine, your thoughts on El Salvador? Um, my prediction is um, kind of like Ben's, uh, but just I think it's helpful to separate some of the use cases of Bitcoin in this scenario in order to make a, a judgment as to the effect on the uh, small country's economy. Um, you've got uh, transactions savings and remittance. These are three very different use cases for Bitcoin. Now, in the future, there won't be much different, you know, we'll be able to consider them together more, but in, in this day and age with, as you pointed out, so little education, um, the transactional effect of Bitcoin is gonna be negligible. Um, you know, payment rails for fiat are just fine and there's digital payments and all sorts of stuff, you know, out there credit cards and everything like that. Um, Bitcoin might help to, um, as a competition, to lower the rates. But as far as just regular transactions within the country, that's not going to have much effect. Uh, savings, uh, I think that this move will certainly turn some light bulbs on, especially for the young folks in El Salvador. So I think you might see several tens of thousands of people or maybe even up to a million um, really doing the research and um, figuring out that, oh my God, this is my chance to save. And so I think the long-term effect on El Salvador's economy is gonna be stunning. It, a lot of people are gonna critique uh, the economy for, oh, it didn't make any difference three years from now, but seven, eight, nine, 11, 12 years from now, when we see entrepreneurs and everybody popping up in, in El Salvador and the GDP exploding, uh, 
everyone's going to point to 2021 as the time when that started. And then on the remittance level, I agree completely with Ben that this is a huge, just sudden jump in um, the uh, you know GDP of the country. It's just going to be this massive chunk that's just going to start coming in because they'll be able to just use Bitcoin a lot more seamlessly to move money into El Salvador from outside. I, I agree with pretty much everything apart from, you know, uh, 70% of El Salvador's are, they are unbanked. So they don't have digital payments. Uh, now they do have digital payments. And there's like, it's a great video. It's on a device documentary on the subject. And it's a guy paying his electricity bill. And he says that previously we'd have to sit on a, a bus for an hour and then he'd have to wait in a queue for an hour and he'd have to get back on the bus for an hour to pay his electricity bill. So now you get all that social scalability, saves yourself three hours um, uh, by having just access to digital payments. Um, so You're I, right. I, yeah. I stand corrected. Yep. Yeah, that's the only thing to be with. Cool. All right. Very good. Moving on to issue four. Issue four. Man sues parents of British boys, Benedict and Oliver, over $1 million Bitcoin heist. The parents aren't denying the crime, but apparently they're not willing to give up the money either. Back in 2018, a Colorado man had roughly $1 million worth of Bitcoin plundered from his digital wallet. After three years of working with investigators, he's traced the crime back to two Brits named Benedict and Oliver, and now their parents are being taken to court. They've filed suit against the miners, they've tracked them down, and they've asked the parents to give the money back. Uh, the parents have completely denied that, saying they won't give the money back. Uh, they gave them a chance uh, before sending these, uh, this, court, this case to court. Uh, they said, I I'm writing you. I'm saying I'm giving you a chance. Uh, we have the evidence. Uh, let's go to uh, Ben Ark. Your thoughts on the man suing the British boys who, still, who stole $1 million. Cheeky chaps, aren't they? Oliver and, uh, Oliver and Ben Benedict, the cheeky chaps. Um, this was, what, 2000, beginning of 2018, and I think now they're both doing their computer science degrees. I imagine that he probably wasn't the only person who got stung because they managed to get some malicious software into uh, Electrum Atom, um, which the guy was running. And uh, I don't think by the sound of it, this guy could afford to lose his 16 Bitcoin um, and is, is, is very bitter about it, obviously. But um, whether those 16 Bitcoin still exist or those kids, you know, managed to get their hands on it, you know, uh, um, just, you know, spirited it away trading shit coins because i think partly how they found out about it was the fact it was like sent to bitfinex or something about um some, some exchange uh, so they probably did exchange stuff with it um the kids did uh yeah it's a really interesting article i imagine more people got stung so I, i'm looking not looking forward to but i'm, I'm going to be interested to see how many more people come forward and say yes i also had you know bitcoins taken from me when i was using electrum atom and i downloaded it from this dodgy source which i shouldn't have done um uh but yeah it's uh yeah it's, it's hopefully it's something which will become resolved um and uh Egypt, it's it's that sort of hack where you're not attacking some big corporate entity which has tons of money and can afford to lose a little bit um your vulnerable people who don't really know how to use a computer are gonna you know download the wrong software from the wrong place and they're going to get stung and they're going to lose all their money and it sucks and it's sad, you know, uh, education is the way forward on that and, and how to make that better. But it's just like similar sorts of scams. It's the vulnerable people which get, um, which, 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 which are attacked and that, that's kind of sucks. It's sad. Um, so hopefully they'll, they'll have some resolve over it, but I can't imagine these kids are going to have the money, you know, they've probably spent it by now. Why would kids spend their money on? Gabriel D. Vine. Yeah, um, it's uh, what I find interesting on this uh, 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 story of Benedict and Oliver is uh, they were clever enough to insert uh, uh, or to, to get an address swapping malware onto this uh, download site. In other words, um, this this schmuck, um, excuse me, this um, schlamazel who um, who put his uh, you know who, who downloaded Electrum. Adam from some sketchy source um, didn't check. He's sending huge amounts of Bitcoin or really, you know, d decent amount back in the day, thousands of dollars worth, uh, and didn't check the, the you know the source address. Everyone should constantly, everyone in every Bitcoin user in the world should always be cognizant of the possibility of this exact hack 
and always double check the addresses whenever sending Bitcoin. Always look at the address, check it, double check it, triple check it. I know it's a little bit time consuming, but especially if you're sending a good amount of your <laughs> net worth, you want to check every single character to make sure it wasn't changed on the, you know, in your copy and pasting. Um, so that that's, you know, that's really too bad that he's so reckless with, you know, with the addresses. It's not difficult for any human being to look at characters and, and compare them. It might take, you know, several minutes if you're really slow or drunk or tired, but take the minutes. Um, the you don't even need to check surprising. all of it, right? You just check the last like five characters even because there's so, so many checksums in place of the, the thing. I, uh, that's the minimum to do. Of course, if you're sending your life savings, maybe you look through, but the first three yeah. and the last three is even enough. Yeah, yeah. If you're sending a few, you know, a few bucks or worth or whatever, that's cool. Um, but, um, you know, always at least check something. So the other side of the equation that's hilarious to me is that he was able to track these kids down. They were, they were smart enough to put the malware in that changes your address, which is a relatively sophisticated piece of malware, but they weren't smart enough to cash out their Bitcoins in an anonymous way where they wouldn't be caught on the other end. That's shocking to me that these, that these kids lacked that. Well, I guess they're children. I guess they're young. They didn't, they knew they had a only code knowledge and no, no knowledge of the world. And, you know, uh, on the other side of the equation, the fiat side or the exchange side. So that's pretty t terrible. It's just like an example of really bad OPSEC on all sides of the equation. It's just kind of like, you know, play stupid games type of situation, but uh, you know, whatever. That's just how things go. Got to be careful in this world. And I think Bitcoin, once again, we were speaking about incentives earlier. The incentive for proper cybersecurity is ratcheting up very quickly around the world, not just to protect your information from prying eyes and from the public. Uh, you know, you're also going to need to understand cybersecurity a lot better in order to protect your life savings. I really thought the most interesting thing about the article is the way that it, it covered the parents. And it said the guy sent a letter to the parents and he said, oh, you know, we can we can settle this privately. You know, I'm just looking for my money back. I don't have to ruin your kids lives. And the way the article presents it, the parents aren't denying the crime, but apparently they're not willing to give up the money either. It's almost as if the parents have no shame. And at several points, some of these articles, they say, oh, the person was, you know, five countries away or a thousand miles away. Like they're not a real person. Like the guy has, you know, bills. He has stuff to pay. He doesn't have his Bitcoin anymore. Somehow they managed to track these kids, which is amazing. And, and then the parents had this chance where they're like, oh yeah, your kids are at school anyway. Like they're probably gonna make lots of money. Maybe even if it's gone, they could work out a payment plan or some kind of a resolution. But uh, it just seems that shame doesn't work anymore. And that the fact that these kids would be shamed, Benedict and Oliver, who would hire them, uh, that the parents would be shamed, that even the country could be shamed, they're like, Ah, it's a million dollars. Like we need that. Uh, or maybe it's already spent. I don't know. Joshua Shigala, your thoughts on the million dollar theft? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the history of hacking has always been in the uh, someone, someone bet something. Ben is, ben is falling asleep here. Someone slap that man. Um, basically, the, the history of hacking has always been with these kids. You know, it's, it's the archetype hacker is the, the kids, you know, kids are breaking into something. And, uh, you know, back in the day, somehow it was like Kevin Mitnick, uh, you know, he, he was, I don't know, like, I, I think if I remember correctly at, at Monroe High School or something when he first started being a hacker and then off to the USC and Tim Berners-Lee, uh, you know, started hacking his computers uh, back in, 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 in the, you know, mid seventies or something like that. Um, uh, before he invented the internet, you know, um, uh, you got George, uh, George Hotz. He, he was an amazing uh, uh, hacker. He basically jailbroke the iPhone, uh, meaning like the, web, the iPhone the web. was this... no, Tim Berners-Lee, the web, not the internet. Oh, the web, right. Okay, okay, yeah, right. Oh, geez, the, the semantics here are important. But, uh, you know, George Hotz was also this this amazing hacker who like, took something and 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 jailbroke it and actually if it wasn't for George Hotz jailbreaking the iPhone 
and putting a, a what an app store before Apple had an app store. It just had a bunch of apps. It basically gave Apple the idea of, hey, an app store, that's a good idea. It was this young hacker kid who, uh, who basically created this app store. And then all these other people would start creating these apps uh, to, to put into Cyndia, or I think it was called, um, uh, which then sparked this light bulb uh, in Steve Jobs to say, hey, we can, we can have an app store on this thing. Uh, maybe, maybe he thought of it before, I'm not sure, but uh, it definitely accelerated it. But, you know, it's sad to see these young kids uh, go and take money from, from people that are, you know, that, that are actually are real people, um, like Ben said. You know, these, these are, uh, and if you read the letter uh, that he wrote, it was really nice. It was like, man, I, I don't, you know, this has been a really hard time for me. I lost this money and it's been, I've really suffered. And I'm writing this letter to you to say, hey, you know, if, if I don't want to ruin you, you guys are kids and I don't want to ruin the rest of your lives by taking you through court and having a bad name. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, can we sort something out and, and for these parents to just then go, no, and, and, and sort of, you know, come on guys. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty shitty. Um, and you know, let's get back to ethical hacking. Hey, eh? Hey, hey, uh, sadly he's left it too long as well. He left it like three years. So now there's this like, sort of time that you're allowed to, uh, to, to get, Get someone, but I, I don't know if it'll stand up in court. That's what the article says. Maybe it won't start. Statute up in court. of limitations. Yeah, those limitations. Um, uh, so yeah, let's see. It'll be definitely something interesting to follow. Uh, but the kids, man, they come on. They're kids. Well, they wouldn't have spent it all. They would have bought some some wacky crap coins. They probably made a lot of money. Uh, they probably got more uh, than enough. Like if they really did it properly. So there's a good chance that they have way more than they need. Just uh, you know, throw throw a dog a bone, eh? I agree, Josh. This letter was very kind, but people often see uh, kindness as weakness, and maybe they just decided to go after him. Martin, your thoughts? Go ahead. Well, I have to disagree with Josh here. You know, you can't compare two script kiddies that got some malware from somewhere that that monitor uh, a clipboard, and then they attach it to a Bitcoin wallet and then redistributed it. That's not rocket science. That's not like jailbreaking an iPhone. It's just pure, you know, petty, petty. Yeah, you know, you know, it's just, just, it's just a script kitty. It's not even a hacker that has got any good reputation. And what they did was illegal. They knew that at the time when they did it, whether they were kids or not. So I think they do have to be prosecuted. And if I would be the judge, I would say, oh, no, no, no. You know, it might be, uh, it might be out of time or it might have expired. But in this case, it took a while before we found you out. So uh, definitely set an example of this. Make sure that, uh, you know, the kids don't, uh, don't ever, ever do this again by just, you know, giving them a appropriate punishment and make sure that they pay it back. The, uh, Gabriel has a good point there. There is bad OPSEC from both sides. You know, if, if, if it's not your private keys, uh, then it's not your coins. And if, if you transfer it to another address than you originally intended it to, you know, if you have a million dollars, you should keep it on a hardware wallet at least. You know, that's the absolute minimum. Just get a Trezor or, or another flavor of the month hardware wallet, you know, get, get a good one. And then it will show you the address where you're sending to and it will uh, on the device itself. And that device is not hacked. You know, it might say something different on your computer screen if it's hacked, but it will show you on your device which address you're sending it to. And then you confirm it on the device. It's the reason why all those hardware wallets have a display. It's the display that you can trust. You can't trust what's on your computer screen. And, you know, it's it, 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 the guy... The, 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 the person who lost his coins could have prevented a lot of, of problems by just getting a hardware wallet. So for the viewers at home, don't be spooked about this. Just get a hardware wallet. They're like 50 to $80 or something. If you, got, you can go very fancy and buy one for $150, uh, but it's not really necessary. You know, you just get a basic hardware wallet that's got good reputation. I won't name them here unless they sponsor the World Crypto Network, but... Uh, um, that's like, it's the basic, but, you know, regarding what should happen to the kids, I think they belong in jail. It's just 
it's just crime. It's just, <laughs> they have crime. They had proceeds of the crime. Now they should go to court and make sure that their, their, their proceeds are taken away. And if they don't have the money, yeah, well, tough luck. That's not that's not a, the problem here. You know, if they don't have the money, they'll have to pay for the rest of their lives and to pay it back. So yeah, I totally um, think that uh, they belong in jail, and they're not like fantastic hackers or anything. They're just nasty script kiddies that probably found the uh, these keyword stealing Trojan on the on the web, then got an executable, then just tied them together change the icon back so it looks like something legit and then uh, that's it it's not it's not really difficult it's just a little bit of lebowski there after he pulls up in the corvette and he's like oh man they already spent all the money <laughs> this blends well into the exit question you be the judged forced prediction what will be the outcome of this case will they go to jail ben ark um yes they, they they i think they probably will uh like martin said but i also want one little word of advice as well as like the guy clearly sent a huge chunk of change in one transaction um and he would have if he did you know after putting that software for the first time if he just done like a smaller test transaction then he would have picked up on that clipboard hack which was in the software um uh so yeah i mean definitely don't send all your coins in one huge massive transaction that's that's, that's a, the first error he made there uh, but yeah use hardware wallet as well but yeah they'll go to jail they'll go to jail gabriel d vine you be the judge they didn't mention the age of these young males from great britain it sounds Benedict like it Oliver. sounds like college age they said they're studying computer science okay so if they were but if they were minors at the time of the crime it's conceivable that they may not actually do any hard time. So it depends on their age. I think maybe if uh, if they're not twins, then Oliver, the older one, which I'm totally guessing, uh, Oliver may end up in the slammer and Benedict may run free. Who knows? Judging by the large amount of money stolen, and if it was a million dollars in the time, they might be tried as adults, although I don't know the British court system. Uh, Joshua Shigala, will they go to jail? Um, I, I, I think there's probably better ways to deal with these sort of people uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like re-education camps. No, I'm just, <laughs> no, like, uh, you know, getting them to, to, to do good things. You know, they're obviously clever guys. Uh, kids, kids, when kids, you know, there's a reason why kids don't go to prison is because they're just stupid. They might be smart in terms of they can code and they're, they're but they just, um, kids are just, they do dumb shit, uh, especially teenagers. Teenagers do super dumb shit. So, uh, you know, I just, I, I hope that uh, th this guy gets his money back and I hope these kids learn a really strong lesson, but I, I definitely don't want them to sit in a cage with Bubba. Martin Wismayer, do you see them uh, doing public service work, you know, cracking passwords, fixing judge martin says go directly to the jail do not pass starts you will lose the lambo and you will have to pay one million dollars no lambo for you no lambo moving on to issue five the the fiat wait there before we go the fiat the fiat equivalence thing is interesting because it's a hundred thousand dollars at the time and then i think it's seven hundred thousand dollars now um but they say claiming a million dollars in the article so do they have to pay back seven hundred thousand dollars or no they have to pay back the bitcoins bitcoin let them yeah. pay back the bitcoin then the price will go up you're so cruel judge martin it's <laughs> very hardcore very hardcore he solves the problems <laughs> all right moving on to issue five issue five the high priest of cryptopia regrets nothing ian freeman could have been a bitcoin billionaire instead he could go to prison for the rest of his life Ian Freeman is one of the hosts of Free Talk Live, the legendary libertarian radio call-in show founded more than two decades ago. The show, one of the key parts of the Free State Project working out of New Hampshire, uh, is a major tenant in libertarians. It was where Roger Veer uh, told people of Bitcoin. They were early Bitcoin adopters. They've been active in the town of Keene, New Hampshire, and now a complicated case involving 
a uh, look like a business they set up, uh, being accused of money laundering, not paying taxes, so on and so forth. Uh, Mr. Freeman now has an ankle monitor, and uh, it doesn't look good for his future. Uh, let's see, who haven't we started with yet? Let's go all the way down to Dan Eve. Dan, your thoughts on Ian Freeman, Free Talk Live. They were early Bitcoiners, libertarians, and now they are facing off against the government. Well, I must say it was a it was a very, very interesting article. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I kind of uh, floozied on the headline and was like, high priest, high priest of Cryptopia. And I was like, oh, this will be easy to talk about because, well, I can I could just moan about having my, like my funds go down with Cryptopia when that went down. But no, it was a 700 page article that strained my eyes and took millimeters of, of, of skin off of my my finger having to scroll through the entire thing but no it was a very good art really interesting article actually it's like a real you know told us a proper story about the, the, the history of um of freeman and how he set up the church and and it, it seems like another one of these you know uh these silk road type things where the, the the fbi came in and they they set up some transactions and he got caught in the end on on one of the what the, the not uh, you know not preventing someone from depositing money um, it, so it does seem like a bit, a bit of a, a setup, but, but at the same time, you know, the, the, the fact that he, he was sort of fibbing to the banks, etc. although technically lock fit, not fibbing, because I like the idea that he was saying about his coins, right? They're collectible coins and, and Bitcoin is like, a, it's a collectible coin. There's, there's, there's only 21 million of them, right? So of course you're going to collect them there. It's a collectible coin. So technically he's, he's not actually wrong there. Um, but uh, it seems like he's yeah quite 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 a free spirit. Didn't really kind of um, uh, you know capitalize on and, and you know spend out on Lambos and stuff like that. Living a very kind of humble life. Um, it's and, and so to to put someone like like that in in jail over kind of like you know minor kind of uh, AML issues and KYC issues that you know when when banks can quite literally like launder millions and billions and billions like openly and plainly and just receive slaps on the wrists or fine and and no one goes to jail in those I think it's an awful awful situation um but yeah very interesting story uh, uh, about the uh, about um Ian Freeman in general and, and also how everything in, intertwines right so they talk about how um, how obviously Roger Ver was there, and, and and also I think they mentioned about Vitalik as well. He was all, he also popped up at the the same place. So it's quite interesting to you know to think about the the kind of early days and all these paths crossing um, that are now being written about now. Very fascinating. So um, yeah, I, I I think uh, I think it sounds like he'll probably get caught. Uh, I did think when I saw the ankle, as in, you know, he'll go down uh, and maybe not for long. There's obviously an incentive for their co-founder of the church. who's also a convicted murderer, apparently, but uh, uh, well, say apparently he was a convicted murderer. Um, so obviously that adds to the kind of the story, you know, and, and probably doesn't help Ian's case. Uh, but I did think actually that his his bracelet was it, I thought it was like the ankle thing. I was like, oh, maybe it's like a square wallet. And then I suddenly thought, no, you idiot. It's a it's a monitoring device by big government. So, um, yeah, good luck, Ian. Uh, free spirit, free man, um, hopefully free forever. But, uh, you know, yeah, sadly, it sounds like he's, he's, he's going to be uh, he's copping one for the team. For, at first glance, it actually looks like he's wearing an, an iPhone or an Apple Watch on his ankle. Mm. And you're, and you're like, oh, that's like, that's the new Apple Watch. Like, oh, you get it on Peak your performance. Ankle. Oh, nice. Let's go to Joshua Shigala. Your thoughts on the Libertarians and Free Talk Live? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a full-on article, but it's kind of a weirdly written article. It, it sort of jumps about uh, and 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 just says sort of just throws things in left, right, and center, and you don't really know. Like at the end of the day, if uh, if you're going to be openly hostile, um, not you know, this is the this is the thing about Bitcoin is that you can be pretty ho like hostile just by using it. It's kind of a hostile act, but <laughs> you're on air all the time and say, "Ah, oh, come on," and just uh, living the living it a, a very openly and brazenly. Uh, you know, there's a reason the the guards at the at the toll gate are gonna chase you down if you just brazenly duck under their toll gate. You know, so um, it, it's one of those things. Uh, it, it's it's. <laughs> 
there's even like mentions of, you know, after hurricane de de devastated Puerto Rico in 2017, digital speculators moved to the island and vowed to rebuild it. Today, Crypto Rico <laughs> seems like a glorified tax shelter revolving around the entourage of a former Mighty Duck actor. I mean, they're obviously, they're talking about Brock Pierce there, but instead of saying this is a, you know, it's, it, it, he's, he's achieved a lot, that, that guy, you know, throughout his, uh, his, his life. And, uh, you know, they just boil it down to a Mighty Duck actor. It does read a lot like a hit piece uh, generally on, uh, on, on, you know, some sort of a person who maybe, uh, you know, is a no coiner and is just angry or maybe he got hacked early and lost all his Bitcoin and just wants to bring someone down. Uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a funny thing. I, I do wish, which Ian, like I loved some of the videos he would do where he'd go behind uh, parking inspectors and put some coins in the machine uh, just before the inspector <laughs> got there. And he just follow, they did this whole thing where they just follow parking inspectors around all day, just putting coins in machines just in front of them so they could never make any money. And uh, they got really annoyed. It was just, it was kind of funny, but um, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know, th there's some weird sketchy stuff in here um, uh, th that, you know, you never really know, uh, you know, they, they throw around like um, that uh, he was, uh, you know, blaming the, saying the FBI was the biggest dealer of child pornography and stuff like that, which obviously gets, um, uh, you know, people's, people's anger up because you know you want to protect children of course it's the so uh, these sorts of things just thrown into articles i think um anything to do with with that sort of topic um i, I think really needs to have proper legal um and and consequences um because it's such a sick thing uh that needs to be stamped out but um uh it, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sort of sort of rambling here, but what I, what I'm saying when I get to the, get to the point is, it see it reads like a hit piece, smells a little bit like a hit piece, and uh, and really like uh, like Dan said, you know, this is a free spirit. He's a guy. Oh wow, you know, he, he, he's you know he's he's done well by getting into Bitcoin early and seeing that Bitcoin is what it is early. Um, but uh, yeah. I, it, it's sort of like what's his name that started bit instant uh charlie shrem also the same sort of thing like you know they just sort of take these people down and then um because maybe a transaction of a transaction ended up on the silk road and, and uh double hops triple hops away or even directly and because he you know you're excited about a technology and you can't keep track of something but obviously that's uh not seen like that by the state but uh, yeah I, I wish him all the best it it just seems like they broke so many rules that they were just out there you know they there's that old thing you know don't shit where you eat or live or you know if you have a fake id use it to buy booze not to drive the car there's this obvious attention on them and it just seems so simple to take donations uh, be a nonprofit or take donations, be a business, pay your people to have these extra steps to have all these Bitcoin ATMs or Bitcoin vending machines, if they're going to call them that, to do all this, the church and to do all these levels and all these complications. It just seems like an obvious way to get the FBI on your tail. And and I wonder too about a little bit, maybe a failure of of vision and a failure of future here where libertarians don't want to follow the rules so badly that they blow their opportunity to become billionaires where they could influence the rules where they could have a, a real free state project where they could have government representatives where they could have television advertisements and uh, education about their ideas and whatever could be done with them could be moved forward with the power of a billion dollars if they were willing to follow a few rules while this incredible currency takes off uh, Josh, what do you think about their failure to see this and that, you know, I, I know they would have had to follow the rules for like 10 years there and, you know, maybe be quiet about it, maybe pay the taxes, not have this complicated scheme, whatever it is. At the end, they could have been billionaires. They could have promoted whatever they wanted. The, the ideological, um, they have to have that purity, right? Uh, they can't. Yeah, I mean, I, th the I think there are a lot of people like that 
it's just the fact that uh, he's a radio host. What, what is he not going to talk about it on the radio? Is he not going to be um, a, a rebel on the radio, on a radio show called Free Talk Live? Like, you know, obviously he's going to be out and outspoken and, and you know, these shock jocks, like that's their whole shtick, right? Is to try to shock people because that gets listeners riled up and yeah, why are we paying for all these wars and these governments? And, and you know, so it's, it's pretty hard for someone like that to go about and, uh, you know, go under the radar and then come out and ha ha, I'm going to buy up, uh, you know, Super Bowl ads and talk about like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm going to lobby for the, uh, so, uh, the cessation of, of, uh, of Maine. The alternative does seem to be his co-host, uh, Mark Edge, who seems to be, I don't know about Dan's thing, but seems to be in no trouble at all and is now buying a private island or something. It seems like there was somebody that was more straight edge and, you know, nose to the grindstone. Uh, let's go to Ben Ark, your thoughts on Free Talk Live and all the libertarian drama that they've presented. Well, the ideology is what drove him to go into Bitcoin so early on and like go full into Bitcoin, isn't it? So I, 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 I think, you know, you can forgive him for, for not changing the way he is to, I mean, the, the squares didn't get into Bitcoin early on, you know, um, uh, the, the, a few did, and there were a few libertarians such as, you know, Roger Ver, who were able to sort of strike a balance and then, um, uh, try and influence things, um, in Bitcoin. Uh, but then, you know, we saw that went quite badly. So maybe it's better that Ian Freeman didn't have that lobbying power and, and as much power as he had, um, uh, as much power as someone like Roger Ver has, you know, obviously with Bitcoin.com. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, his ideology is the thing which, which put him in the position in which he's in. So it makes sense that he continues to be who he is. And I think there's, I, I, I can, you know, give the man a lot of respect for that. Um, is there some naivety for sort of mouthing off and, and, and say, you know, saying all these libertarian ideals and then, uh, then having to face the music when the man comes and knocks the door. And I don't think there is, I think he's prepared for it, which is, what the article kind of misses, like his, the art, he's, he's um, uh, criticizing the article for being very laid back and not really taking the court case thing seriously. Um, but of course he is, you know, he understands the implications of, of the jail time he may do. He's potentially facing a life sentence and they do, you know, state does like to make an example of people. And as we saw with uh, McAfee, there's some real world consequences when these libertarians do get caught and they are backed into a corner. Um, uh, so no, I, I don't think he's naive, and I don't think that he should have done anything differently. I think he should have just, you know, did what he did, and um, uh, yeah, maybe he could have tried to work within the boundaries of the law a little bit more. But you know, civil disobedience is a very powerful tool, and um, we need these dissidents to challenge laws and challenge society and challenge the power of state, um, particularly ones which are so vocal and they have such reach when it comes to like their viewership and. If they're running a radio show or whatever, like this this guy was. I mean, I don't know so much about the guy himself, but um, on a superficial level, you know, just reading the article and researching the guy a little bit, um, I think he's prepared to to face the music and he stuck to his guns and uh, he's an example of civil disobedience uh, and he have all those all that support from his viewers and um, uh, from his viewership. So yeah, I think it, it, it's it's fine that the article was. I agree completely with Josh. It's kind of like a they wrote up like a freak show article. Like one of the quotes at the beginning was uh, when they walked into his house, I was like, this doesn't smell like somewhere a billionaire would live. Um, uh, Cause he kind of just stank of like mold and sweat and <laughs> it's like a stinky house. Um, uh, but you know, this is quite often the point with a lot of these Bitcoin is that they got into Bitcoin for ideological reasons and they don't really care about the material wealth stuff. Um, uh, they, they, they just, they just want to continue to try and push the, um, what they believe the libertarian ideals they believe which is wrapped up in the protocol um so yeah you know good luck to him hope he doesn't do hard jail time uh probably will because they'll make an example of him gabriel d Vine. you know uh it's, it's always fascinating to, to 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 explore the stories of these early bitcoiners and it's it's very um it, it puts all these um you know 10 year old occurrences and events and decisions and vicissitudes into really interesting light because 
they are extremely magnified because all the activities that the, those individuals were doing back then, um, you know, everything's worth a thousand times more now. So, oh, it's 50,000 times more. So uh, I think the same thing's going to happen kind of, you know, with things in recent years that we don't really think about that much, but in 10, 12, 20 years, uh, everything that we're doing now is going to be magnified 500 or a thousand times. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see, but um, uh, I just want to say that this photo, he's got dirty feet up on his desk. It's so disgusting. Like I totally, I don't approve. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's gross. They're, they're dirty. They're not just like, it's not just the filter on the photo and the Photoshop thing. They're actually dirty. So I'm not surprised that his house smells. Um, you know, I can't blame a guy with, to have, a, a, you know, wires and stuff on his desk running, um, you know, a radio show, but like dirty feet, dude, no. Um, and, uh, I, I agree with Ben's perspective on this guy. He's an ideal ideologue. He's an idealist. He's, um, you know, a, a, a libertarian, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, an ardent, um, you know, sort of extreme guy. So to him to like, to like bend, bend the rules a little bit or be like, uh, you know, like, you know, justify the ends, justify the means with, with, with some ends down the line with, it's just not acceptable to him. He's a hard line guy. So I can see kind of why he did that, uh, in, you know, 10 years ago. And, um, you know, that's just, that that's just what, the natural thing is, you know, they're there. And he might not even, the thing is like to, to, um, to have the perspective that you pointed out there, Thomas, like you would have to assume that all the systems are going to exist that long. And, and as a lot of Bitcoin hardcore believers don't, uh, you know, think that the Bitcoin is the pin that's going to pop the balloon of false authority. And that um, all they need to do is hold on long enough and stick to their guns and the system that would crack down on them will collapse. So that's kind of, I think that's another part of the thinking behind that decision making path. And um, I kind of just wanted to like point out that there's like, um, I think it was Josh who mentioned Charlie Schramm. There's a lot of these, not a lot, there's a handful of these human beings from back then, most of whom we've never heard of and never will. There are people out there, human beings, uh, they're possibly like still working their day jobs, you know, whatever, coding for 135 grand a year or whatever. They're, you know, they're getting to be a little bit more senior in their careers, even if they got into Bitcoin as, you know, a 16 year old in 2011. Some of these people out there have thousands upon thousands of Bitcoin. Uh, several of them will be billionaires. You know, there's like a handful of these of, of Bitcoin billionaires already today. Um, there's the um, uh, famous Romanian fellow by the name of uh, Popescu. Um, and uh, what was his first name again? Something with an M, mm, mm, whatever it is. Um, this guy, Mircea, Mircea Popescu. Um, very <laughs> interesting character, very controversial. Uh, you know, he's got his blog still online, Trilemma. And this guy, Mircea, um, either faked his death or actually drowned in, in Costa Rica a few months ago. Uh, I was really curious to see what he would do because I had a feeling he might be the first public Bitcoin trillionaire in a few years because he had um, over 250,000 Bitcoin. And... Um, the type of effect that people, uh, libertarians or sort of right libertarian guys like Pupescu will have on the world is very unpredictable because these people did not, could not exist for the last hundred years and even possibly a bit longer, even with the sort of robber baron type of era or whatever you want to call it, the, the 19th century industrialists, they had to play by the rules still. And, you know, the government had still had quite a bit of power, but I think that, um, the idea of the, these guys like buying tracts of land and creating kingdoms and stuff like that, that's coming. I thought Popescu might be the first one. Obviously he's left the public eye, whether he's, you know, moved on to another realm of existence or just in hiding remains to be seen. But, um, uh, you know, there's, there's people out there, there's human beings, I'm assuming mostly males, but um, possibly, you know, both genders, whatever, that are going to have a totally unpredictable effect 
on the world's economy that's going to create change so much faster than most people recognize. The technological innovations coming down the line. Bitcoin itself just as an effect on society as a whole. And these individuals with unprecedented power to bring uh, their political vision into the world is just it's going to be a stunning couple decades ahead as these, you know, libertarians never really had a way to bootstrap like they do now. And this is a huge movement of people that are all getting turned on to this sort of um, the orange pilled populace. You know, there's millions of us now and they're going to spend their money in a really different way from Wall Street schmucks. I'll tell you what. Well, going back to what Gabriel said about uh, the idea that you could just surge forward and eventually the system would break and it wouldn't matter that you'd broken the system's rules. Uh, I want to tell my story about Rome. And I probably told this story before, but I like this story. Hannibal Barca was marauding through, uh, you know, the continent and he had these big war elephants and everyone was afraid of him. And the towns would do this little thing. When Hannibal would roll in, the towns would take down their Roman flags and they'd put up the Hannibal Barca flag in Carthage and they'd be like, yay, Carthage. And then Hannibal would move on to the next town and the townspeople would get their Roman flags back out and they'd put them back up because they knew that Hannibal was just passing through and that Rome was forever. And I would, I would worry about that strategy to try to break through while you do have big momentum and people like Albright or Freeman uh, have a lot of ideological zeal and uh, presumed righteousness on their side. And often even the righteous uh, die in jail cells. Uh, so it's a very dangerous game that they're playing. And, and just to remember Carthage, uh, after Hannibal went home, after conquering Rome a couple of times, Rome came back, Rome made it out to Carthage. They filled in the port, they salted the earth. Nothing ever grew there again. Uh, don't mess with Rome. It's just an important lesson. Uh, Martine Wishmayer, your thoughts on Ian Freeman and Free Talk Live and the incredibly long article that, uh, that some of you actually tried to read. I, I was skimming it. Uh, oh, yeah, well, you, you did give us some homework this time, uh, Thomas. Uh, I found it a fascinating article. It, it, it did read a bit like Josh said as a hit piece um, because the, um, the, it, it was an op opinion, opinionated writer, um, but it did have some really nice things in it. Like, for example, uh, that Kevin Andreessen, one of the core developers at the time, uh, he he uh, went out for lunch and then paid for it in Bitcoin, and that Kevin was handing out like like uh, free Bitcoin to everybody uh, who who asked for it in a faucet back then, and this is how yeah. I got my first Bitcoin. Yeah. It was my I believe five Bitcoins I got, and then uh, I tried to like change my IP address once, uh, and so I used the VPN and I got another five Bitcoins. So I got ten Bitcoins for Kevin. I never. I, I did thank him, thank him for that at the Bitcoin 2013 conference because that's where I met him at the time. And thank you, thank you for the Bitcoin because it got me started with Bitcoin. It got me interested in Bitcoin and I started mining back then. So that was nice to see that Kevin also went to this free state project. Uh, and I did read about this, this project. I never listened to the podcast and I wasn't like, you know, uh, really into this this all libertarian stuff but it, it the article really like highlights what happens if you stick your head out and you troll the government they will come after you and you know you can like hide try and hide but the government very powerful they will eventually come after you and it's 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 a bit sad you know the guy had like all these opportunities and he just like stick to his ideals and I agree, agree with Gabriel that like the, 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 the dirty feet on the table, that was like an absolute no, no. I was like, that, that was like what? <laughs> I thought at first it was photoshopped and then I enlarged the picture. I thought, no, 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 no. And he's really, really walking around barefoot in his, in his house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a long read. I do recommend people to read it, but do like keep in mind that the, the, the opinion of the writer is very much being pushed through. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, um, it, it is a bit like Bitcoin history. And, you know, the fact that Roger Fair uh, kept this station afloat by donating three and a half thousand every month to uh, keep it running and then decided at one point that no, you, I should pay you in Bitcoin because it's a libertarian show after all. This is like, you know, 
One thing I do agree with that, you know, uh, we call Roger Ver Bitcoin Jesus. He's now more like Bitcoin Cash Jesus, but uh, uh, the real Bitcoin Jesus uh, should be this Freeman guy because, you know, he's the one that started a church because that would probably be tax advantage or something. And then he, he like, you know, he had his gospel on his radio show to talking about Bitcoin and the state but yeah unfortunately stick your head out troll the government and they will come after you this is something you know i think you know most people learn that when they're in their early 20s so yeah sad but uh yeah i don't know i don't think he should be in jail for that long or a lifetime that's just ridiculous um but uh yeah it's it's what happens they set an example it's uh, unfortunate but true it depends it depends on what they facilitate though doesn't it like you know what sort of money transfers and transactions they knowingly facilitated between what kind of parties because that's you know how they got well, shredded if if, 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 he, if he if he got if there's some, some entrapment it would be illegal in europe but in the us that's a common way to like uh, to arrest people is that uh, somebody like undercover goes to him and says oh i've got these silk road coins i'm going to change them for cash you know, I, I sold drugs online and now can I use your machine to change them for cash? And then if, if, if he would have said, yes, no problem, I don't care. It's Bitcoin, you know, free world, free market. Then he's then, you know, then they got that on tape or something. Then they probably got him, you know. So, yeah, I don't know the exact details, but uh, it's sad. I think he shouldn't be in jail. You know, if I would be the judge, I would say you're free to go, but wash your feet, please. <laughs> Judge Martin, a little easier there on Ian. And of course, uh, Martin reminds us of that classic Japanese saying, uh, don't be the nail that sticks out. That's the one that gets the hammer. And is, is, uh, is that the Japanese saying? It has a lot to do, I think, with their culture. Like it's very much a like stay in line kind of culture uh, where ah. their American culture might be more it's, like be the nail. In Dutch language, out. it is if you stick your head out above the mowing fields, then the lawnmower will get you and you're gone, you know, so it's it's the same exact thing, trying to pass down that knowledge and uh, doing it through metaphor. And and I do just want to say just a little bit here that these aren't just people on a screen for us. Like, I don't know that I've met Ian Freeman, but we've been in the same room and I went to Porkfest and our friend Derek J is mentioned in the article and I hope he's not involved in the court case. It wasn't entirely clear. Uh, I hope he's doing good and that all of these libertarian people are uh, to me, they just seem like normal people. I don't think there was malice here. Uh, they're using this money laundering laws to track them down. Remember, these money laundering laws were invented to crack drug cartels. And a drug cartel has all kinds of negative externalities where, you know, somebody didn't pay and they get beat up or somebody overdoses or somebody steals the stuff or there's crime. There's always these bad things for society involved. But here, I just, I don't understand where the crime is and where the damages are. Certainly, perhaps these laws were broken, uh, but were there real you know, problems? And I think this is pretty obviously what the libertarians are going to say as well. And I just, I mean, I, I wish all these people the best. We don't have any ability to change anything or affect uh, this case. And I hope Derek J is okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah shout same. out to Free Talk Live and uh, all that they've done for Bitcoin and, and for their own cause. Whether you agree with it or not, they express their own opinions. They did it often. They let anybody call and it peacefully. Disagree peacefully. Exactly yeah. that. They didn't harm anyone. But now, as Martin predicted, it's time for you to be the judge again. What will happen to Ian Freeman, Dan, uh, Dan, Eve? What's going to happen? How will it turn out? Will he go to jail? I think so. I think uh, it seems like the classic. You know, the that he's been set up for it. He's obviously done some funny stuff in the past. Um, bit of a kind of, I would, well, kind of victimless crime spree style, as I think they stated in the article. Like, but um, I think it's caught up with him by the sounds of it. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, he'll be made an example of, um, sadly. Hopefully not, though. Gabriel D. Vine. I don't know. I didn't get a clear idea of what even anything was about in this article, but nice sentences, nice prose. So who knows? I have no idea. And they went there, they interviewed him, they hung out in his musty house. Joshua Shigala. 
Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm hoping that uh, he'll have enough money to get some really strong lawyers and that the rest of the community will help out uh, if his funds have been frozen or the, at least the, uh, the off ramps have been frozen <laughs> for him to be able to pay lawyers. But even now, nowadays lawyers will even accept Bitcoin. So um, I'm re- I, I think there's a whole lot of people that he would have behind him that are very astute with the law um and that uh no he, he'll he'll be free i you know that feet up on the desk thing was more like a yeah go suck on this sort of picture <laughs> ben ark you, well, G- G- jesus is jesus so he's you know what would jesus do He'd not wear shoes probably um but um, they've got dirt on him the case was going for five years uh we don't know what that dirt is I think mine's probably right. It's probably uh, entrapment. And quite often in the US, it's always funny you have like, they'll try and do one of these entrapment things and they'll actually figure out the, the person they're entrapping is also an, an agent as well. And everybody in an organization is an agent and they're all trying to entrap each other. So it's a, it's a big, I mean, obviously Ross wouldn't have, fought, Ross Albert wouldn't have fallen into the mess he fell into had it not been for someone trying to entrap him. Um, so uh, yeah, no, I think he will go to jail, to be honest. Uh, these facilitators of, Freedom technologies like Bitcoin, like the, the Charlie Shrems, um, they're you know they're a, a, a central point of failure. They're something which they can attack. You know, they, it's going to struggle to find that the people who Ian Freeman were maybe dealing with, but they can they know who Ian Freeman is. And um, uh, by the sounds of it, there was some sort of service he was offering where he was people could send Bitcoin and then he would give them cash. Um, I think they seized five million dollars worth of coins, Cassius coins. And so I pronounced that wrong. Uh, uh, I imagine from being a, a long, you know, standing Bitcoiner, he has other sources of Bitcoin stashed here, there and everywhere. So financially, I don't think he'll be struggling to try and meet his defense. But I do think that, you know, they would have built up a big case over five years and then they'll be going for the jugular, trying to make an example of the guy. So I do think he'll do time yet. What would Jesus have worn? According to archaeologists, they found small tufts of cotton on Roman sandals, meaning that Jesus would have worn socks with sandals the correct way that they are worn. Martin- oh, maybe he's German. Maybe he was German. Huh? <laughs> Very true. No one, no one that speaks German could be bad. Martin Wismayer, your thoughts on what's going to happen to Ian Freeman, Judge Martin? Throwing it down. Uh, I, I, if it would be up to me, I would say not guilty, out of jail free, collect your uh, coins or the collectible coins, you're free to go. But I'm afraid they will uh, set an example and just go after him because they probably can. And and this is this is this is really sad because uh, this is how governments basically ruin people their lives. You know, it's uh, it's. It, it, as I said, it's like a bunch of victimless crimes. There isn't like nobody got 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 hurt or anything. Uh, it's he it was just going after like his ideology of like you know a libertarian state and you know moving to a, in the middle of nowhere and try to get people to move there to to swing the votes and you know it was all the typical mindset of the early Bitcoiners. You know we wanted like. Uh, the internet gave everybody a voice. You know, nowadays we can have a podcast and we can you can tell the world about what we think. Um, back in the days before the web, World Wide Web, that, this was impossible. If you didn't own a TV network or a newspaper, your voice was not heard. So the internet gave everybody a voice and made everybody in power a little bit less powerful. And Bitcoin is doing the same for money. And they were the first ones to see this. And this is why... Bitcoin stuck with all the libertarians at the times. Now, then, you know, then it became, it, first it was a proof of concept, then came the libertarians, then we saw a sort of like e-cash-like application, primarily for dark markets. And then came the little mom and pop at investors and, and, and then came big money. But, you know, we shouldn't, you know, without those libertarians, Bitcoin would have never succeeded. So I think he doesn't belong in jail you know just give him back his radio station maybe say no 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 more trolling on the airwaves and uh and, you know let him go but uh i'm afraid they'll set an example it just reminds me of that sort of really angry cop going after cheech and chong yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
we're gonna get those pot smokers. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just such a, what? Just calm down. Should, should, calm Sean, down. I used to watch those. <laughs> Ama it's amazing to see Chong doing interviews now. <laughs> And he's he's pushing his own line of marijuana, and it's completely you know above board. It's completely legal. He went to jail because his son started a company that made bongs in his name, pieces of glass, ah. glass glass vases were sold in his name, and the government busted down his doors with the SWAT team and put him in jail and all that. And um, that's why we have the movie The Wolf of Wall Street. Chong's, <laughs> Chong's roommate was Jordan Belfort. Chong inspired his roommate to write his story down, became a book, became a movie, and uh, The Wolf of Wall Street was from Chong. Is that right? Wow, what a, what a trippy connection. Yeah. You mean sorry, cellmate? Sorry, deputy stuff. Cellmate, yeah, not, not just a roommate. Yeah, we're, we're already down. <laughs> we're just throwing down. Language, but this yeah, just, I, this I is agree with the panel. I think, I think Ian's going down. I, I guess they call themselves the Crypto Six. I hope Derek J's not in there. But um, yeah, the government's going to make an example of them. This is going to be Ross Ulbricht too. Uh, the libertarians will be chanting, where's the crime? Where's the crime? But again, money laundering is a law. It's on the books. They're going to say it's a crime. Uh, they didn't change any of the laws in the free state. They never reached that critical mass. Uh, I remember when the project was first discussed, I thought they made a huge mistake going into New Hampshire instead of Montana or a less populous state. I would have gone for the, the smallest not Rhode Island, but any other state that's small, doesn't have a large population, has a lot of land, uh, that would have been a better bet. They went with the historic bet that the people of New Hampshire were live free or die. Uh, but that was 200 years ago, right? The people who are there now are like, leave us alone. You know, we want our parking meters to work or whatever. They didn't, they didn't adopt to this movement. There was always an oil and water. Uh, I talked to Derek Jay and others you know, that had seen documentaries and films and uh, even Derek J's victimless crime spree that I think you guys can get on amazon.com on DVD. I have it. And um, yeah, the same thing. They, the town didn't really adopt well to the libertarian outsiders. So yeah, sadly. Yeah, you would have thought like Texas or something as well, even if you, uh, yeah. It was a strange. No, but Texas has a lot of people. The idea was to have, to go to a state that with very few people then move in en yeah. masse, like all the libertarians there and then, then, yeah game the election system and then change the law yeah. which i think you know is 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 yeah well, Maybe and you, you'd US also and you'd also need libertarians to run for office there there are no libertarian office holders in the united states congress there's 525 or 35 of them or something not a single libertarian so uh, it, i don't know it kind of it violates a lot of their individuality to run for such a collective thing uh, I'm not sure they'd be into it, uh, even if it was in the free state, right? If it was the freest of all states, I'm still not sure. Wow, well, it's kind of like infiltrating the uh, the, the biker bikers uh, and, and turning them into United Way or something. You know, it's not, not going to happen. Only only Nixon can go to China, but I think we're running out of time for today. Uh, so I just want to remind everyone to check out the WCN Clips channel. WCN Clips, just Google that. It's on YouTube, you can subscribe. We've got 64 subscribers. We've got all kinds of great clips from this show that you can check out and share. Check out WCN Clips on YouTube. Now we're gonna to go to predictions or story of the week. Martin Wismer, are you ready with a prediction or a story of the week? Go ahead. I got a story. Last time I couldn't tell the story, but this time I can tell it. We like upgraded our uh, small BATM2 model. It's our uh, best selling model since what, 2013. And it's not the prettiest model. And that's why we thought, you know, we needed to upgrade it. So we increased the screen size. So our clients, the ATM operators can have their logo there better and bigger and it's easier to operate so uh, we'll be shipping that from very soon if you order now then you know that it will ship with the largest screen and we managed to do that without actually increasing the price because that was like you know we wanted to keep the price the same so this is a really i'm really excited about that i was biting my tongue last time because i couldn't tell it i couldn't tell it because the screens weren't in yet but now the screens are in so we're shipping that with a large screen and we created a vr interface 
for those with an Oculus headset or VR glasses so that they can uh, like use the everytrade.io uh, portfolio management app in VR. So if you're done shooting zombies in VR and you want to check whether your, your portfolio is still okay, then you don't have to take off the VR headset and you can just view your portfolio in VR. So I thought that was like revolutionary new 3D. It is all very green because when you view your portfolio, there's like trees everywhere. It's like you're in a virtual forest. So, you know, it's the greenest, greenest portfolio tracker you can just possibly get. And it's free. Okay. <laughs> that was my shameless plug for this week. Thanks, Thomas. ATMs and Excel spreadsheets, an unlikely mix for VR. And everyone can check that out at General Bytes, uh, generalbytes.com, I assume, or something like that. Dan, Eve, a prediction or a story of the week? Go ahead. Um, I predict that uh, oh, I've got a nice positive prediction, actually, that would be cool if it came true, which is I, 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 would, I predict and hope it comes true that some uh, some big Twitcher uses Ben's software because it really yeah. is incredible. And uh, and I and I just think that it, it it's yeah, it's just hilarious to, to watch it. And uh, if you see if if someone's giggles any any time that they're speaking in a, in an inappropriate place, it's probably because you can't see it, but someone sent sent Ben a slap or something in the background. <laughs> so so oh, you've got to forgive us if we laugh inappropriately at certain, at certain times. But it really is incredible software, and um, yeah, I, I think it should be. Uh, I, I want to see I want to see people like using it at, uh, in anger. Okay, let's happiness. let's. Let's skip ahead. Let's go to Ben Ark next so we can all slap him in the face. Go ahead, Ben. Prediction. I hope it works because I think it was bugging out at one point in the show. Um, a prediction is... Uh, I've got any predictions, really? Um, no, I don't think I have a prediction. I haven't really got a story either. Um, but the yeah, the software is great. Alan Bits has come along really nicely. Um, uh, there's a developer called Fitty. He's doing a lot of good work on the Twitch side. He's got like a Twitch uh, streaming extension. But as I said, I don't understand how Twitch works. There is um, a withdraw faucet here. So I know this is kind of coming out like this isn't live, but if you're quick, you can scan this and you'll get 2000 sats and you can hit that three times. And that's some of the money we made on the, the Slappy machine. Um, is Oh, that's going to be in the way, isn't it? Let me put that over there so you can still slap me. Um, well, actually, let's put it here, shall we? Um, oh no, we can't put it there because that's my face. <laughs> we put it down there. There we go. Uh, over the top of the price because it's going down. Uh, does slapping machine work? Does anyone try slapping me? Yeah, uh, I, we I, tried I, it, but uh, but yeah, it didn't work. But then I won, no. I won the lottery, so it didn't matter anyway. Woo! Yeah, oh no, the, the, the Y came out of my slapping machine. That's why. Oh, that's sad. I I tried using it, Ben, and it yeah. uh, the I get an error that says. Uh, I get an error that the LN something like you know it it's not supported. Is I it what what, what wallet what wallet are you using? It's Breeze. Yeah, I'm using a sh shitty wallet. It's called uh, Breeze, yeah. and it bombs out with a camera too. And it's like it pay three hundred sets, which is the minimum to gamble. I'm not a gambler. Oh, that's totally not what God, that's and then I. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey. I got. Oh, no, mine says processing payment. Yeah. Just please wait while your payment is being processed. Ah, hey. God, it's all coming through. <laughs> oh, hey, Dan, uh, it, it seems to work now. Yeah. <laughs> Working I now. think it was, I think maybe, maybe it's because it, well, the wire fell out or something. But anyway, mm. It's very temperamental what I've got going on. I now. have even won. I can't believe it. Can you just like put this, this thing on? I'll just keep playing until I lose it all, you know. Like, <laughs> copy winnings URL. You must claim the sets now. Actually, uh, I take back no, no, uh, no. the crappy wallet because it it it, it didn't work at first, yeah. but now it it does seem to work. And ah, okay, redeem, and it even it even gives me back my price. This is so cool. I can't understand that not everybody. Oh, fail to receive funds. That was the one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait, wait a second. It may. Oh, and now it says payment received. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's a bit confusing, but it's yeah. also bleeding edge technology. Exactly. You know, people Don't have to get wallets. into this, and. I, my favorite extension on Ellen Bits, because now we're all about the slappy machine and the gambling and the tips and stuff. But I do, I, I like the, the faucet is really cool, but my favorite is really the Spotify jukebox. I mean, mm. it's, you know, like a jukebox, okay. you know, it's everybody can start a jukebox that works on, you know, on Bitcoin or Lightning even better. So it's, it's just, it's, 
just there's so much in there and it it hasn't got the exposure like i use umbrella because i don't want to mess with stuff so if you if viewers at home want to use it just use umbrella install umbrella go to the app store click on lm bits create a wallet and then go dive into the extensions there's a whole bunch of them there's like the, there's not enough qr codes to fit on the screen you know just like <laughs> There is so many extensions. So yes, uh, good idea, Dan. That is actually the big story of the week is all these new additions to the LM bits uh, but it's a, extensions. Uh, it, it, let me tell you, it is beta as well. So, you know, don't get your hopes up too much. It can bug out occasionally. Um, yeah, well, I got my 450 sets that said it's it's beta, but it's really working ah, now. No, so. here we are. There, there is there is a story of the week there. No, uh, Fusion 44 is a really good developer. Um, uh, he's been switching our python server software from quartz which is what we use but it's quite a niche piece of software to fast api which is a much more used piece of software and we think that's going to iron out a whole bunch of bugs and then hopefully we'll be able to get out of beta um uh but yeah so so, so yeah thanks fusion 44 for all your hard work on that mate all right very cool joshua shigala a prediction or a story of the week go ahead uh, story of the week. Um, uh, we, we 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 did a lot of stuff with the uh, uh, with the standard.io. Uh, it's re really it's it's moving along. The 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 community's growing like crazy. It's everyone's very excited about it. So I'm I'm really happy about that. Um, the second part of the story is that I'll be on the Black Sheep Summit, which is starting in about uh, well, it's already started. Uh, which will have uh, David Wolf. Uh, this isn't wow. live, uh, but uh, it has a whole bunch of really cool people that are talking about gold, silver. Uh, it's a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, more sort of hippie type libertarian uh, prepper types. And, uh, and uh, yeah, they're all about like uh, learning how to grow your own food, how to get off grid, how to uh, uh, have gold and silver and Bitcoin and crypto, um, how to uh, do permaculture and, uh, you know, all this sort of stuff. Uh, how to how to make batteries uh, and and solar power and hook that up and how to uh, you know trade in a self sustaining way, all sorts of really cool talks happening over there at the uh, blacksheepsummit.com. Uh, check it out. Uh, use standard um, if you're if you're watching this. Uh, that'll give you fifty percent off the ticket uh, right now. We can pay with uh, standard the standard token now. No, no, it's just. Oh. Uh, it's just uh, a discount code. All oh, right, okay, okay. I thought, you, I thought it was like live. <laughs> I wish that would have been really cool. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah. All right. Oh, and uh, and Ethereum seems to be going through a fork because no one's upgrading half the nodes. Aren't yeah, upgrading. and didn't the didn't the developers tell everyone just to not do transactions for a bit? Just uh, I, I don't know. Like I'm just sort of reading up on it uh, now as it, as it happens. Uh, there was a there was a, some some sort of upgrade and. This is why actually I really liked with uh, or found interesting with what Amiyataki was doing back in the day with having an uh, alternative implementation of, of Bitcoin. I always thought that was interesting too. So you could have the choice, but that never happened, never really took off. Ooh. It's it's nice for the Ethereum people to take a day off. You just you can't say. Yeah. <laughs> no, one of the one of the core devs, one of the core devs literally said, "Can everyone just stop doing transactions? Go outside, take a walk. We all need to just cool down." <laughs> that's one so, way that's was one he way being serious, yeah, like serious yeah he's being serious yeah yeah serious yeah i took it seriously oh, uh funny. and finally gabriel divine welcome back to the show good to see yeah. you. you have a prediction or a story of the week go ahead gabriel yeah i have a story of the week um so there is a, a country in the middle east um which was invaded successfully uh excuse me successively <laughs> by um not successfully <laughs> by uh, the Soviet Union for 18 years. And then uh, there were several, just a handful of years of Taliban rule when um, they were beginning to eradicate the highly prized opium crops at the center of the world's heroin trade. And then what a surprise, the CIA and the US came in in 2003 and also uh, had an uh, invasion which lasted 18 horrific expensive and very deadly years. Uh, yeah. And um, it's really interesting to see how um, that event has really served to wake up a lot of people to the Biden pretendency, as they call it. Um, this a guy who uh, appears by all intents and purposes to be senile, um, supposedly in the Oval Office, some people 
uh, are not convinced about that. In any case, it's really interesting to see how even um, lamestream media sources are beginning to wake up to the fact that this is not a competent person. And um, it's really interesting uh, to see that sea change beginning. I really think the Afghanistan situation, as sad as it is and as deadly and horrific, horrific as it is for in, in so many ways, at least there's a silver lining that it could begin to shift uh, the American political landscape and by extension, possibly the world. So something to keep your eye on. There does seem to be an interesting disconnect where the last two presidents have wanted to immediately withdraw from Afghanistan, where the media seems to want to stay. Uh, so it has been interesting to watch that because it was, of course, Trump's plan to withdraw, which Biden then doubled down on and, and went ahead with. Uh, but, but I mean, it's it's about how you withdraw as well. You can't just up and leave. Like, I don't know what Trump's plan was. I don't know what Biden's plan was. But, you know, you do it. You, you take the $20 billion worth of planes. You take, you slowly move the cars. You, you, you get some of the uh, weaponry from what out. I, from what I've seen, uh, Trump's plan uh, was actually struck down by Biden when he came in. So uh, while he may have uh, given lip service to this um, withdrawal, he definitely did not follow Trump's uh, plan for withdrawal. It does seem like both, however, paid lip service to this date of September 11th, that we must be out by then. Uh, uh, like Josh said, it's, it wasn't so much about whether we had our gear or our people or our helpers or anybody out. It was this arbitrary date. They, uh, they had several negotiations with the Taliban. The Taliban didn't keep up their side of the negotiations. I'm not sure why you would continue with the agreement, uh, but it, it does look like they continued with the agreement. And regardless of whether we're ready, uh, we are out. So, but more political talk later. Uh, we'll let that pass. Everyone, check out w, uh, worldcryptonetwork.com. Uh, DJ Booth has been working on the website, and Marwi's been working on tagging things. If you go down here on the left side, you can see we talk about Bitcoin price quite a lot. Uh, Thomas Hunt, Tone Vase, and Joshua Shigala leading uh, the human race uh, with Theo Goodman and Jimmy Song right behind. You can also check out topics that we've talked about on the show. There's so many topics. Brian wow. Armstrong, Deutsche Bank, Goldman backed, uh, Secret Island, Rick Falkvinge. Uh, really wow. good work by Mar. We going here and trying to tag the topics. And for a lot of these, like Ron Paul, well, we only got one there. But for a lot of these, you will see multiple videos about the topic uh, here That's on the cool. World Crypto Network. So check that out at worldcryptonetwork.com. Thanks to DJ Booth and to Marwi for doing all the tagging. And uh, we've also got hosts and guests. You can see all Amazing. the shows here with, with Jimmy Song, just scrolling back here. Uh, and there's probably more and stuff like that. But very cool. Check that out, worldcryptonetwork.com. And I, I wanted to close with a little tweet that I put out today. How can you tell if you have an early NFT? And here we have a picture of a rare Pepe and a Curio card. And if, you're, if your early NFT has a picture of mad Bitcoins, it's an early NFT. If it has no pictures of mad Bitcoins, it might not be an early NFT. Uh, as you can see here, they found today that uh, Curio uh, Kurt Cobain uh, is wearing a mad Bitcoins uh, Pepe t-shirt. Uh, so pretty cool stuff to see rare Pepes and uh, Curio Cards United uh, 2018. Uh, that one came out there and, and then rare Pepes was before that. So very cool stuff happening in NFTs, but we're not really going to talk about it here. I just wanted to show that cool That's picture. Cool. Um, but thanks again to everybody for joining us. So sorry that Restream It didn't work today. Uh, we're not going out live on YouTube. So you're going to have to push the thumbs up button later. You're not going to get that instant feedback. Uh, the chat room's not going to be there. You're going to have to chat later in the comments. Pretend that it's the chat room. Uh, but yeah, after this ends, we're going to upload the video. So to people who watch tomorrow or over the weekend, they won't even notice. They'll be like, everything was normal. Uh, but to everyone else, sorry, we had the technical difficulties. We don't know what happened, uh, but hopefully it'll be better next week. So thanks so much for joining us. Until next time. Bye. 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 Bye.